right there the boom is back hey everybody oh jesus so fun peter clark welcome red tv live to the very first very first edition of unscripted what is unscripted I have no idea it's unscripted that's the point here i, I have no idea yet what we're going to do i have a little bit of an idea but I, you know i'm just going to try to open this up and have a heartfelt conversation with everybody listen First of all, I just want to say thank you to everybody uh, over the last couple of weeks, couple of months, actually. I just realized that the last time I did a live show here was a July 22nd. That was the last time I did a live show. I, I, you know, I don't even know how to do this stuff anymore. Uh, I needed a break. I took a break. When I say needed a break, I chose a break. And um, during the summertime, you know, we wanted to connect, reconnect with family and friends. And I'm sure a lot of you people are were, were doing the same thing. I hope you did that. Um, even if you did it just virtually like this, uh, it, and, and not, and away from, um, you know, just, a, just away from social media. I know this is crazy. I'm talking about here on social media, uh, talking about getting away from it. Uh, but I needed a break and I needed to kind of reinvent and rethink and regroup. And I think most people had to uh, do the same thing. So this show is all about that. And, uh, you can join us, you know, this is the fun thing. Uh, you can join us. What, what I'm trying to do today is I'm trying to get more people involved with the show. Normally my shows are, uh, one-on-one -on -one interviews and they're pretty in depth and, uh, lots of things going on with, with, with those shows. Uh, so really don't get a chance to engage with a lot of different people across a lot of different subject matters at the same time. So what we're going to try to do today is exactly that. But of course, Hey, you know, I can't do this stuff by myself. This is not what I do. Uh, you know, I just, I love people. I love connecting with people and uh, that's what we're going to do today. So before I jump to that, let's, let's, let's talk about, uh, let me just jump right to the comments. First of all, hopefully, uh, some people are, there we go. Look at this. See, I see some great people already, all right? Rhonda, haven't seen you in a while, but love your content. Everyone go check Rhonda. Uh, she does amazing stuff, uh, with, with, with helping people again, you know, uh, mental, uh, sorry, help, mental health and awareness, wellness, all these kinds of things and tying in with phys physical fitness, all this kind of stuff right there, that person right there. Awesome uh, person puts up really cool content. And thank you, Rhonda, for always uh, you know, sharing on this show. I really appreciate that. Look at this, my favorite accent in the world right there from uh, Massachusetts, Melody. Good to see you, Melody. Melody is, has an amazing story, everybody. So make sure you, uh, I'll get back to Melody in a little bit, but Melody is a fantastic writer. And uh, she helps people. Uh, she's been through PTSD herself and uh, really had to take some big steps in the last, say, 12 to 24 months. And she's done that. And now she's leading the way with helping people with that. So absolutely fantastic. And hey, look at this. <laughs> I know that guy. And today is Friday uh, as we're, we're filming this today or it's going live today on a Friday. And uh, this guy does a freestyle Friday. So if you're ever if you're on LinkedIn and you want to see something super cool, creative, uh, musical, all of the above, that guy right there, uh, Rob House. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, I speak of, Rob House is going to like this little introduction. What's coming up next? Hey, uh, let's go to what we're going to talk about a little bit today. Unscripted is the whole idea is, again, I want uh, people to feel free. Listen, the text line is there. Listen, just text me with your name and number, and I'll, hey, I might give you a shout, and we'll just chat. <laughs> we'll bring you in that way. It doesn't always have to be on video. Everyone thinks video. Uh, there is some technicality with behind bringing people in with video, so that's why sometimes it's cool to do it this way. Uh, hey, why don't we do this today? Uh, this has been on my mind uh, for so many different reasons. I've had so many conversations with people about happiness, um, and the idea of being happy and that concept. And, and, and I, I bet you a lot of people, as soon as I even put that up, might've thought it, it's one of those words, it's almost like organic, you know, it's one of these words that's used so much, uh, that maybe we're not even 
having the right conversation today. I don't know. I'm just throwing these ideas out. Maybe, maybe there's different conversations, but I know that we're, that for me, I'm trying to ask the right questions. And uh, I have a friend here that's going to help me ask the right questions today. So what is happiness? It was driven by a question uh, from this beautiful person who's going to join us. And we're going to talk about that. Um, and we're going to listen, engage with you guys. So if you guys got questions, you want to uh, tell us what you think happiness is, put those in the comments. We're going to have that conversation. If you want to text me with your name and number, Hey, maybe we'll uh, just give you a call and you can explain it for yourself and so on. Uh, let me introduce you to somebody I kind of like. I like her. Just kind of like her just a little bit. Just a little bit. Uh, she is fantastic. Uh, I had her on the show twice before. And, and she's been like a guest, like jumping in on different shows and all kinds of stuff. And uh, we were talking on Clubhouse. We reconnected on Clubhouse over the summer. And uh, I said, hey, you know, I, I just texted or sorry, I just posted something about you on LinkedIn. She goes, I, I don't go on LinkedIn. For, I haven't been on LinkedIn in a long time. I was like, wow, what's OK? She said, same thing. Family break, all kinds of different things going on in her life. And uh, I said, well, listen, I'm going to do a show on Friday. Uh, hey, you want to just jump in and kind of hang out and, and do some stuff? She said, yes. Uh, what better way to come back to LinkedIn than to jump on uh, uh, this show? So, which is fantastic. So, please welcome along 365 Give founder, uh, someone who is just incredibly influential and um, just has a powerful voice on LinkedIn and on on different social media platforms. 365 Give is all about giving back, making a difference, and and purpose, and just an amazing, amazing person. And I can't help but welcome my favorite Jacqueline Way. How are you? How are I? Oh, I gotta go. Oh, just gotta unmute you. Unmute. Yeah, I, I, I unmute. It was just my face, right? You just wanted my face. Here. I just want and the yeah, hair. And the hair. I got my lioness on today. You rock. Yeah, see, that's my favorite. That courage is one of my favorite words. And lion is my, uh, you know, my, the animal that I, I normally get come up for me. So it's always about the, a lion. So yeah, that's you got the rock and roll hair today. We're, we're back to the 80s. Hey, hey, everybody. Yeah, right it's there. right, me, right? It's like we had to come with the hair today. And it was. Uh, absolutely was, you know what uh it's it's the freedom of just showing up in your natural state so this is it all yeah, <laughs> you got me looks, naturally i love it i love it it's fantastic so hey listen thanks so much for taking the time out today to join me on um i know you said you've been off um you know linkedin specifically for a little while i know you've been doing a lot of cool things with uh with clubhouse but uh why don't you just share with us you know why did you what why the break why the break mm. from you know i know it's summertime and it's more time with family and friends i get that yeah. but uh what else was inside that uh, decision to to pop back from uh linkedin and things like that for a while well you know and it wasn't you know linkedin specifically um it was it was a little bit more life specifically uh, I realized I really needed to, I literally say it's stepping back so I could step forward. You know, I think a lot of people, and it's perfect for this, this question that we're going to ask today, what is happiness? I think sometimes we don't take enough time in our own lives to step back, ask ourselves the big question, our whys of the world, our what's of the world, our how's of the world. We get so stuck in the busyness of our lives, the busyness of every day, the busyness of our families. Um, and we we go on the hamster wheel. Mm -hmm. And I noticed, I wasn't all the way there, but I, would, I noticed I was getting on the hamster wheel a little bit. And I like to say, you know, I, I zoom out so I can take a broader look at everything that's going on in my own life. And I go, okay, where do I need to start doing some tweaking so that, I am being true to myself. I'm being true to everyone around me and I'm being the best possible version of me. So I can be the best possible version of everybody else. And when you start digging into that question and start asking yourselves these big questions, what is happiness? Um, what is happiness for me? Because it's different for everybody on this planet is you'll find one question leads to another leads to another. Mm -hmm. And I know the best way for me is the more I can sit with myself, start really digging deep into these questions that then when I come back, re-entry today, perfect. Uh, when I come back, I'm giving the best of myself to everybody on whatever platform it is, whether that's my 365 gift platforms, it's my beautiful friendships here in LinkedIn. Um, and that's what LinkedIn is for me. LinkedIn is obviously a platform, but it's a relationship with people, relationships that we've built. And, you know, I have so many people that have supported me in my work. It just always blows me away um, completely and totally. 
So I want to make sure when I'm here, I am not just posting for the sake of posting. I'm posting for the sake of bringing us together and for the sake of creating that happier, healthier world that I envision for everyone. Oh, wow. <laughs> Jeez. I could end the show right there. That is happiness. Uh, you know, but you, you, what I've heard so strongly in all the, that languaging was a sense of purpose. The reason mm -hmm. you, you find an intention, a strong intention and purpose behind mm -hmm. why you want to communicate with people, how you communicate with people. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, what, what you hope that legacy piece might be. I, I hear all that in that languaging, which is beautiful. I totally relate to this idea of stepping back and doing things. I'm just, everybody just, hey, this is unscripted. So we're just rock and roll. And that's we're why just I'm going to go. <laughs> That's why I'm throwing up a lot of, I'm just putting the comments up as we go. There's some amazing comments there for you, Jack. And I just want to make sure, please go back and check absolutely every single I will. You know, I will. So much love being sent your way right now, which is fantastic. Um, but I, I do resonate with the idea of stepping back. There she is. Um, it's a, shout out to Melanie. Love you. Right? Thank you. Mel Melody's rock star. Uh, you know, the, the idea of stepping back and taking some time. Um, I know that I did that th this summer, especially during August. I took the entire, I wasn't in this studio for 31 days. I didn't even step in it. I wasn't even physically in it. And, and I found it fascinating that, uh, like you said, to try to find some time for yourself and be quiet up here. Um, gosh, I struggle with that. And maybe some other people can relate to that and yeah. throw it into the comments, but man, this is a very busy space. And I recognize very that. And I, and I needed to kind of step back and go, what are you doing? Like, not what are you doing? You know, this. What yeah. are you doing? You know, what are you center? doing here? What are you doing? Yeah, there, this right? we talked about this before the mind and that, yeah. that, that, that path between the, the mind and the heart. And the and heart. So, there's it's, so much going on there that, uh, I know that I had to step back and spend some time on my own. I was with my wife, obviously traveling. Uh, but you know, many times you just jump up in the morning by yourself with a coffee, you go down by the water and you're sitting there and you're like, wow, uh, I'm just, I just need to, uh, debrief and so on. Uh, I know that uh, Suzanne, <laughs> we, said, Heaton, yeah, we said this right. Cut your head off. Can I just cut my head off? Yeah. Can I just stop thinking? Yeah, can I just like, yeah, get rid of that for a few totally. minutes to find some peace, right? I mean, it's right. a bit of that. How do we find the peace, you know, within ourselves? You know, we don't have to get really deep about this, but this thing is so busy sometimes. Like yes. it just never, that chatter never shuts up. And it's how do we, you know, you and I were talking about this the other day. How do we drop from our head to our heart? Yeah. And a lot of people have heard this, but to, First of all, you know, I think if you are a Buddhist monk sitting somewhere on a mountainside, you you master that, right? You train your life to master that for yourself. But us regular everyday human beings, how do we figure out how to do that? You know, how do we draw it from our head to our heart? How do we, I don't think the chatter ever goes completely away, but how do mm. we just quiet a little bit to get some perspective, right? right? And that's the big one. How do we get that perspective and how can we learn as much as we can possibly learn to understand that concept of dropping from your head, from your heart? So you're living from your heart, not living from this computer brain that we've been given that just repeats on autopilot all the time. Right. And that was, for me, the stepping away. I, I always need to get back to that space because I, I ebb and flow through it. And where I'm at right now is I want to become more and more aware of it. I'm just becoming aware of the chatter that's going in my head. So I'm going, hold on. Is this like, what is this really? Like, you know, I have a conversation. I'm like friending my brain right now, rather than trying to push it away and trying yeah. to change thoughts. I'm actually befriending it going, you know what? I love all this chatter that goes on. You're super smart. You got so much knowledge. Thank you for retaining it all. But let's be real about what's useful and what's not useful. So I'm almost having a conversation with my brain. It's like my yes. heart and my brain are having a chatter between each other now. So at least I've got the line of communication open and I'm not just listening to what's going on here. So I'm aware of what's going on, but I'm not getting stuck in it. And I think that's all of our problem. I claim it. Actually, I'm not going to say all of our problem. It's my problem is I, I, I get sometimes stuck in that hamster wheel of my head and right. I'm learning to step back from it. I'm just stepping back from it. That's all it is, is giving myself perspective of the chatter. Right. Yeah. And, and, and like you said, the chatter, the noise, the stepping back from that, man, I got to tell you, I'm just sharing it with everybody. I'm trying to, this is super busy and it's exhausting. I, I don't sleep very well, uh, Jacqueline. I'm trying to figure out ways yeah. to sleep better. I'm going to actually have a show on that. Uh, we talk yeah. about what is happiness. One of the subjects is definitely going to be about sleep. sleep. Yeah. And the main reason is because I, I'm just a, 
I'm, I've been suffering from this for five or 10 years now. Like I literally I have a friend of mine and she's actually here on the show uh, watching right now is uh, Karen Judge. Uh, she has a uh, an organization, a movement, if you will, called the uh, Dose of Happiness. So it's all about <laughs> happiness. I know you always right. talk about a dose of happiness. Dose you know, of happiness. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I, I, listen, I hope she doesn't mind me saying it, but she sleeps like unbelievably. Like, so she so says, you know, sometimes like, do you really? She says, oh, I yeah. sleep about, you know, about 10 hours a night. I said, 10 hours oh, a night. Yeah, yeah. I need I six. 10 hours I need, a week, yeah. I'm six. happy. Yeah, yeah. I, I get six on average. The good night for me is six <sighs> hours a night. That's but good. that's all I need. Good. Because when you look at, you know, we talk about this, you know, when we talk about happiness, we always think it's it's a feeling. And happiness is a feeling without a doubt. But how are we fueling that happiness in all areas of, of our life? And that's the balance part, right? So are we creating happiness in our bodies physically through what we're feeding ourselves, both from you know, nutritionally and then the exercise that our bodies require in our life? Are we feeding our, our minds with learning and information that creates happiness for us? I always talk about what are your algorithms in your life telling you, right? And that's what we're feeding our mind. So when you go into your phone and you open your Instagram, your LinkedIn, your YouTube, what are you feeding your mind with that's filling you? And your algorithm on your phone will tell you because it'll pop right up. If you were to go into your YouTube right now, what is that algorithm telling you that you're feeding information into your brain with? That's your mind part, right? right? So I know when I go into my Instagram, I got to tell you, certainly I get ads, but all of my Instagram feed is nothing but good. When I go into LinkedIn and my LinkedIn feed, it is nothing but goodness. Good. When I go into my YouTube, I can literally say, okay, give me what I need to learn today. It will show up for me, literally. Right. Because I have fed my personal algorithm in my outside world with what I need to fill me up. And we can look at this in all areas of our life. What are you filling your mind with? What are you filling your body with? And then what are you filling your heart? And you can call it your heart. You can call it your spirit. You can call it your soul. You can call it your divine, your God, whatever it is. How are you filling all parts of your body that way right. to create happiness in your life? So it's not what is happiness. How are you creating it for yourself in your world? And right. you can do it in all areas of your life so that you're then experiencing happiness and feeling happiness in all these areas of your life. But it's a, it's a whole body connection. And, and we forget yeah. that, right? Yes. It's whole body, body, mind, spirit. Absolutely. Well said. Uh, listen, uh, speaking of this text number, I'm going to do, uh, let's bring somebody in. Let's see if oh, I can. Cool. Uh, I've never done this. Uh, yeah. So this is so cool for me. Bring them on. Yeah. Like I just like, I like, I'm just going to do this because, uh, because I can. <laughs> yeah, and listen, I want to give a shout out, Rhonda. I see you. I loved your message. Rob House, you nailed it. I love you, my friend. I'm so glad you're here because you so get this. Now I'm hoping the technology is going to work for us today. All right. Okay. Fingers crossed. No, you um, know what? Let's trust. Don't hope. We trust Here we go. it's going to be perfect. This could be a really cool friend of mine. It's going to be awesome. Let's see. Bring him on. Is this Elaine Jacques? Yes, it is. How are you, Elaine Jacques? Good to see you. Well, sort of. You know no, what I'm saying? Oh, you're going to make me cry. Elaine uh, Jacques, that's who that is. Ah, uh, good to uh, listen. I saw she your comment in. She dialed in. <laughs> she dialed. She got it. She's always got it dialed in. She's always got it dialed in. Hey, good to see you. Uh, sort of hear from you. Uh, gosh, it's so nice. You're so supportive so to cool. everything I ever do on here. I just want to say thank you so much for that. I know you're a big fan of this person across uh, from us right now, and uh, so we so love what you do. We love what you do. We love all those kinds of things, but jumping around because we're going to jump around a lot today. And listen, I just so appreciate you being here and we don't get a chance to do this very often. So I said, you know what? I got to start doing this more often. So Elaine Jacques, tell us uh, if you can, because uh, I haven't even seen most of your posts for the last 30, 40 days. Everything okay with you? Everything and fine? And you had a good rest of the summer? Yes. Let's go with yes, because we are focusing <laughs> on the podcast. Yes, the answer is for sure yes. I'm yes. talking to Elaine. The answer right. is... For sure, yes. Elaine is truly a master and and love you. You know what? I learned about something I have to tell everybody. And it's so perfect that Elaine, you are here to share this with you. And you can believe it or not believe it, but it was something fascinating that I was having a conversation with yesterday. And it's something called sacred contracts. And sacred contracts, if you choose to believe, is um, 
contracts that you decide to make in the spiritual world before you come down to have experiences with people in your uh, life to learn the lessons that you want to learn for this lifetime. Okay. It's just my belief. You don't have to believe it. But the cool thing about sacred contracts is that when you share space with you, Peter, and Elaine pops into the room who we know nobody has to believe us or not. Like we're just soul sisters and it just doesn't matter. So Elaine's part of my sacred contract on this planet and I love it. <laughs> Welcome sister. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, like I said, I, I, I've had the pleasure of having uh, Elaine on the show as well. And we did a one-on-one -on -one and we could have went on for like, you know, we, we kept it to 90 minutes, kind of like our shows. We kept it to 90 minutes. Uh, but Elaine, let's, let's jump to that question. What, what is this for you? What, what is happiness? Cause we, I've been speaking about this throughout the summer with people off and on, uh, you know, again, just privately. And uh, when Jacqueline brought it up directly as a question, I was like, yeah, I, you know, I never really asked that question. So uh, how about yourself? What, what is happiness? What is happiness? Well, happiness is definitely getting to talk to two of my favorite people on the planet. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate so that. Yes, yes. No, I love both, what both of you are doing. But happiness to me is feeling that sense of peace and joy and having it emanate from within yourself. And so I think what what causes that to happen or what's the basis for that depends on the person but i think happiness actually comes from within us and emanates out into our world wow yeah yeah I, again elaine i was i was saying to jacqueline uh you know off um you know not on shows we I haven't done a show in 10 weeks so i mean this is the first time i actually have public conversations if you will and uh i've just been you know i've been struggling a little bit with a lot of different thoughts and ideas and 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 this idea of finding happiness pursuing it and so on um yeah i find it draining for me and i haven't figured that quite out yet how do how do you how do you respond to somebody who's talking about that using that language uh chasing happiness finding happiness pursuing reaching it? reaching that was a good word that came out recently reaching yeah. for happiness what do you think of that Eileen? Well, I actually had someone else from LinkedIn reach out and they were kind of searching for what kind of content should I do more of? What have you liked most? And I said, it doesn't matter what I like most, what lights you up inside, because that's where you are going to touch the most hearts. And so that's what I would say to you, Peter. Peter, there are things that light you up. And I can see that when you're on screen and you're doing those things. So what is it that makes Peter light up and do his best work? And that's what I would love for you to do. Wow, that's very insightful. I appreciate that. Thank you. And you know what? I what I've learned from taking all this time off is a I'm not very good at it. That's I, but I but I'm <laughs> <laughs> not good at. It. But I want to be good at it. I really do. I want to get good at that and be able to spend that time with with Renuka, my spouse, and and really mm -hmm. be present because I'm not. I know that I'm never present and i think the happiness obviously can only be found in the present i'm, I'm guessing or i'm suggesting yeah. and i know that i i'm not very good at that i'm always in the future i'm always in the past none of that works for me obviously it doesn't work for anybody mm -hmm. um but to your point what lights you up and i noticed that for me uh over the last two or three days when i said you know what i think i want to jump on i have some shows lined up for next week and and, and, and in future uh where i do my one-on-ones but i said i haven't done this for a while and as soon as i started thinking about it i got excited i was like you love to do this, Peter. I was like, and it's not what I love about it is this. I mean, it, it's just what we're doing right now is to have Jacqueline hear you and you hear Jacqueline and you connect these people and all these beautiful people that are in the comments and all that kind of stuff. So that does light me up. So I, I appreciate your, uh, your insight on that. I really do. Peter, I have a question for you because you did this when we were in the, the green room before we popped in and you said, oh, wow, I'm actually a little nervous. <laughs> but wasn't that the excitement that you were feeling to yeah. get back to it? I must say, like, I, yeah. you know, I, 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 as much as people think I'm, I don't know what they think, but my, the comments of people suggest that uh, I'm, this doesn't make me nervous or anything. It makes me scared. That's why I do live, by the way. I can make videos all day long and then fix them and, and look like a look perfect every single time. Uh, I do live because it scares the death out of me. That's why I do it. I do it because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if how I'm going to show up. I don't know if it is going to work out or not. So that's just kind of like live music. When you're playing live music, it's like, wow, you got one shot. You can't unring the bell. And once you go down that path, you're like, wow. That So it just heightens your attention. It heightens the now. It heightens oh, the present. Oh, oh. 
you just answered your own question. It heightens the now, it heightens the present, it heightens the moment, and that's where you feel your best. You just answered your own question for you, dear. You can do it. <laughs> I just, see, I gotta, oh, start no. <laughs> I gotta start listening to myself on my own show. <laughs> you do, go back start... and listen to that again. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. That was so perfect, Peter. Oh my God, that was so perfect. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Elaine Jacques, listen, my fine friend, I, I so appreciate you being here. I thank you for picking up. I know you probably saw some sort of weird number come in and you're thinking like, I don't know, is this one of, <laughs> is this a robocall? <laughs> okay, so I have a question for Elaine before she goes. <laughs> okay, Jacqueline, Jacqueline has a question for you, Elaine. Okay, so Elaine, one of the things I really love to do when I'm speaking with people now is I ask, share one you know, my son taught me a really great lesson uh, over the past year, and my son is 10 years old. And his beautiful lesson always to me is happiness comes one smile at a time, strung together moment by moment to make a beautiful life. So can you share one moment of happiness with us that you've recently had in the last 24 hours? Oh, absolutely. This morning, I actually was out on a walk and um, I saw that someone's package had been misdelivered. It was out in the middle of a, of the sidewalk and I picked it up and mapped to their house and took it back to them and just imagined that they were going to be very happy that their package had found its way back and I got to be a part of that. Oh, Yay, see. love that. That's see, cool. that found you. That found you, I think. That's super cool. Yeah. See, I like that. Yeah. I like that. I know that feeling. I know what you mean by that. I, that happens at my, I don't know, strangely at my house. I don't know why it does, but the packages show up and stuff. And it's always a couple houses away. I don't know why I feel good. I always feel good. Like, hey, I'm just going to go over and just drop it off and actually knock on the door to make sure they get it. And then they're always shocked. It's like, who is this guy? And, and, and when you tell, and when you tell them what you're doing, you're like, well, he's not a delivery guy. Look at him. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> unless, unless rock and roll is really not a good business right now. Uh, he said, so, uh, so you're, I know what you mean by that. You know, there's something really kind of unique in that one second of time. And they go, Oh, and they're almost like, Hey, I really appreciate that. You're like, Sure. I expect you to do the same for me. I hope. <laughs> I hope. So, hey, listen, so good to so good to have you here. I hope you stick around. Throw some I so appreciate you. you're always supportive of Jacqueline's work. I know you're supportive of everything I do, which I, I so appreciate. And I hope we're going to connect again in the near future. Okay. Absolutely. And you guys love have you. My support. So thank you for the amazing work that you both do. Oh, love you, sister. You. Thank you. Oh, so cool. She is so awesome. I she's mean, so awesome. There's just no, she's yeah, so, she's just, so just awesome. It's that uh, easy. Um, yeah, it is that easy. You know, we, uh, I've had her on the show and, and we had just a great conversation, but she has this way of, uh, she's, she mm -hmm. has this real energy. And then if she, when she quiets things down, I'm like, you know, you're leaning in, you're like, even though it I physically doesn't change the audio, you know, it's like, <laughs> You're, like, you're listening in, and I just love that about about her. Okay, let's see who else. Uh, someone else uh, jumped in here, and uh, I'm trying to see. Oh, so someone else, by the way, uh, interpreter joined. Okay, someone with a five eight seven number. Um, five eight seven. Uh, if you just texted me, uh, just tell me who you are, so then I can call because I want to make sure that obviously we know who who we're calling out to. Peter, this is such a cool option that people can just text in and and like. Yeah, I mean, good for you for mastering that. Well, like, I mean, this is certainly not a master yet working on it. You know, what I'm finding is that we want to use the technology as best we can. And, and you know, what's funny about obviously all of the technology we have, um, we have this thing in our hand all the time and every now and then you go, oh yeah, it's a phone as well. I can actually, <laughs> it doesn't always have to be video. It doesn't always have to be a text. It always doesn't have to be a post. Uh, I could actually just pick up and, and chat with people. So I, I think that's really, really important here. I'm going to see there's so many more uh, comments coming in here for, uh, let's see, here's Daniel. Uh, Danielle, and uh, thank you for mm. tuning in. She's all the way Morning, over. Danielle. Yeah, she's over in uh, in Central Europe, and so it's uh, later in the evening there. So we, uh, I guess it's, uh, what time would that be? I'm guessing somewhere between 7 or 8 o'clock, something like that. So it's Friday night, it's happy hour. And trust me, I'm about 20 minutes away from it myself, just so you know. <laughs> yeah, I love that happy comment. Hour. It's like, yeah, you got to digest the information. I love that. That's such a great, yeah. Food oh, for this thought, is right? nice. This is a nice one here. Uh, mm. and talk about some sleep habits with you. So thank you, Rhonda. I will uh, mm -hmm. just a call away if you like to record privacy. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, sleeping. Uh, master. That's a subject that we we definitely need to uh, keep talking about for sure. And uh, 
And uh, hey, everybody, listen, don't forget. Listen, uh, I just want to make sure I know it's new for most people. And they're thinking like, well, how can I get on uh, sometimes Peter's show or just to come on and, and say something here? Um, there's the text number. Where is it here? I'm just trying to find the text number here. Um, it's uh, None of that. We are what we consume. Yeah, yeah right. And, right. We forget, right? Like we forget in all areas of our life. We just it's, it's not that we don't know. We know we just forget. Uh, or we choose to look the other way because we think that something else is going to make us feel better. Right. And in reality, it doesn't. You know, as you're doing that, Peter, you know, I, want, I always like to talk about our internal GPS. Mm. Right? And this this can go in regards to food. This can go in regards to what you're listening to, what you're consuming. And then that internal guidance system, like, which way do I go in my life? And it's really simple. And that GPS, not unlike the one we have in our car, on our phone, you know, if you're going the wrong way, it says, turn around, like do a Yui in the road. No, go that way, turn around. You gotta do a, a full stop and turn around. And our internal GPS is really simple. Just look at how you're feeling. Now, most people don't like to look at how they're feeling sometimes, and it's part of the problem. We can call it emotional EQ. But really, if you just in the moments of your day, so let's say you choose, you're having lunch, Let's see, is it going to be pizza or is it going to be a really beautiful, healthy salad? You know what? If you just listened to how it's going to feel, okay, yeah, the pizza is going to feel like a bit of a reward, but how's it going to make my body feel? Or go ahead, eat the pizza. How's it really making you feel? Is it making you feel energized? Is it making you feel light on your feet? Is your brain clear? Are you feeling full? Are you feeling really lethargic and slow? just start listening to your body, right? It will tell you what to eat for you. I don't believe in big diet plans and all of the other things. If you actually listen, it will tell you. Uh, and it goes for everything else in your life. If you're not sure which path to go down for your career or if you're in a job and you hate it, bingo, that's your indication. You're going in the wrong direction right now. So you just have to take the time to listen to your internal GPS, your body GPS, your brain GPS, because it's telling you in every moment of every day, and that's the here and now, what is, what is it telling you? How am I feeling? It's telling you. That's the signal. It's that simple. Just yeah. tap into that. How am I feeling? If it feels good, you're going the right way. If it doesn't feel so good, you're not going the right way. And I yeah. just recommend to people, just try it. Try it for a day. See how it works for you. Because yeah. the more you tap into that, that's the now moment. Listen to your internal GPS, your algorithm. And it's going to tell you. 100%. Listen, I want to show you something here. Um, I just thought it really struck me. You and I, you know, you've been reconnecting with me and I super appreciate it. You've been um, kindly pushing me a little bit uh, out of my comfort zone. Oh, I'm shoving um, you. I'm not, I'm not kindly pushing you. I'm like <laughs> yeah, kicking listen, your butt. It's like, I, just go, just go. I, Cause I, I see try it. to be politically correct here. That's all I'm, trying I, to now I'm, I'm happy to say it, you know, sometimes, yeah. and Peter, we've all said this to you. We see the brilliance. We know, and we're so clear of your brilliance. And sometimes we all need it. And people have pushed me, uh, and I. And on the other side, I so like it's like, oh my god, thank God they pushed me, right? Yeah. And so sometimes we need that little angelic push by people we trust and our friends to say, "Go, you got this." And yeah. that's what I'm doing. Wow. I'm just saying, "You go, you got this." I know it for sure. Oh, listen, you're super kind to me. I always are. I appreciate that. Hey, I want to show you something that you texted me. You texted oh, this. Wow. This was a text, everybody. This is the kind of wow. stuff that she shares on text. I hope, I don't think there's anything in here that's uh, personal. No, no, you go. Not at all. Yeah. I, well, I just love. I can't what, read it without my glasses. No, I'm, no, I'm going to read it. For, I'm going to read it for everybody right now. <laughs> but this was a text. So, uh, so I get, I get up, uh, you know, it was first thing in the morning. I open up my phone and there's a text from Jacqueline. And this is one of the uh, pieces of the text. And I was like, holy cow. Like, this is like almost a book. I mean, I could write a book. Well, I think many people could write a book around this. But let me read this to you. What if we defined a successful me as simple as it is a success because I breathe today. I love today. I see today. I hear today. What if that was enough? Could that be enough for you? That would make every single day a beautiful success. What if we redefine success, uh, not by, uh, not, but the outside world or oh, not by, sorry, it would have been yeah, by, yeah, exactly. that's the spell yeah. check. There you go. Uh, <laughs> define not by the outside world, but by our inside world. What would it say? Uh, or, sorry. What would it say success is? I was like, holy cow. The fact that you just get up with gratitude of saying it's a success. I define my success because I woke up. I can hear, I can see, I can love. Um, 
gosh almighty, expand on that for us a little bit. Where did that come from? Because that was bright and early in the morning when you sent that. So I'm thinking that was like five o'clock in the morning. She's sending it. To you, so good for well, you. Welcome to meditation. You know, I think that um, part of our challenge goes is that, you know, and, and listen, we all talk about this happiness comes from the inside out, you know, all that stuff. But it's when you dig down to it and you ask the big questions. So what is defining your life? Is it what everybody, what we see in the media? Is it what we see by what other people tell you? Is it the programs that we were programmed in our brain as children by our parents and what they define success was for them? So when you get down to it, you know, you got to go and ask yourself, like, does success mean that if I don't make a million dollars or have a big company or successful business or whatever else, does that mean that my whole life was a complete flop that me being alive was not successful. Right. And I think that's the question that we need to ask ourselves. Is it, you know, listen, I've had to ask myself this question. You know, I don't, I do a lot of work in the world. Obviously most people who know me here know this, but my number one role in this world right now is being a mother. But yet as mothers or a stay home parent, let's say we don't, we don't define that as enough, right? We don't design, we don't even consider raising children to be a successful life mm -hmm. and staying home with our kids. So when we dig down that, you know what, crap, we forget that just being born is enough and we let everything in our world define what's good or bad or right or wrong. But what we know is that, for example, happiness you get to a certain income in your life where you can't buy happiness anymore. Mm. Can't remember what that number is. Actually, you can go to Steve Woolhouse has a beautiful post on this around happiness. Yeah. And I think the num some magic number is somewhere around the, the lines of $70,000 as a total right. income or $77,000 as That's a total right. income from your family that after that point, you're not buying happiness anymore. You have all you need right there. And whatever else you buy is not going to increase your personal happiness, right? Right. So, so when we have our basic needs and we just look back at our life and go, okay, so is success really that I get a hundred likes on my LinkedIn post? Is success really that uh, 200 people jumped into my, cl my clubhouse room or is success that I feel enough and is success that in today I got to touch one person? Right. Is that enough that my cup is so full? I feel so good for myself that I can now flow that to one person, not the whole world, just one person. How can I make myself at my best version of me? And then how can I share that with one other person on this planet? And could that be enough measurement of success that yeah. the work that we do in with ourselves, we feel happy, we feel peaceful. I'm not saying stuff's not going to come up. Listen, we live in the outside world. Yeah. But have we come to a point where we can manage that stuff that comes? Listen, I'm going to tell you, I had something huge that I'm not going to share publicly come up for me in my family last night, massive, that hit me like a brick in between my eyeballs this morning and last night Wow! that I had to sit down and deal with. And I had to sit down and deal with myself because as much as it actually didn't have anything to do with me, it had to do with my son. It had everything to do with me yes. because I could see it. You know, my kids are a mere reflection of what I need to live in this world. And so I literally said to my son, we're going to come back around and talk about this, but I need to sit with myself and see what this means to me first so that we can best deal with this together. And so when you do that work and you sit down and say, okay, what is this? What is this trigger moment mean for me? What is setting something off in me that's not making me feel good? I need to go sit down with myself and say, okay, what do I need to learn from this? And every time we do that, every time we get a trigger, somebody's pissed you off, you've had a bad phone call, whatever it is, you know, your kid's driving you crazy, your husband or wife is driving you crazy, your partner. When you can start noticing those trigger moments in your life, and just for that moment, you take a breath and go, hold on, I can feel it, it's coming up, that trigger moment, I'm getting angry, I'm getting perturbed, I'm getting whatever it is. When we can start seeing those trigger moments and go, you know what? I need to stand back from this for a moment. I need to walk away from this in this moment, because if I get angry, that ain't going to feel good for me. And it's certainly not going to feel good for you. What do I need to go back and learn from this right now? Mm 
And every time you do that in your life and you go back, okay, what's, what's the lesson that's coming right now? How can I learn from this trigger? Because that person triggered something in me. It's not about them. They triggered something in me. What is it? What's being triggered, right? So I do this now so consciously because now when those come up, I can see them. I can walk away from them. And then each day, wow, the peace comes, right? right? The happiness comes, the more joy comes, the more clarity comes in all areas of my life because I'm not replaying that trigger in my mind, right? Because we all do this, right? You get into an argument with somebody, you get into a thing with somebody and all of a sudden you're replaying it. Oh, what could I have said? Oh, I said the right thing. Oh, if this comes up again, I'm going to say this this time, right? And it just, you replay this over and over and in all of that beautiful brain space that we have to go facilitate what we really want to do in the world is gone and you're stuck, right? You're stuck in that moment and you're replaying it. We all do this. We go back 20 years and we like replay a moment in our life from 20 years ago. How, how are we going to fix that 20 years ago memory, which is right. so long gone and the person's so long gone. So now I'm doing that in the moment to start to get some of that. Today was successful because I stopped a trigger and I learned from it. Today was successful because I got clarity. Today was successful because I'm living the best possible version of who I am. And today I'm peaceful and I'm happy and that's enough. Mm. And now I can go out into the world and do whatever the hell I want. And yeah. that's the beautiful part. Now I can go out into the world and do what I want. And everything's coming to me rather than me going yeah. out, like struggling for You're it. You're in receiving mode, it seems. Like I'm in receiving mode, receiving right? Receiving. And oh. that's, it's all that. Hey, listen, I'm glad you're in receiving mode because I, yeah. I, I have a gift for you. I have oh, a God. gift for you. Since, <laughs> since, since you have a receiving attitude here this morning, and by the way, that Bring was awesome. Well everything you just said, I, I just love that. It was so cool. Um, I, I, I don't even, I'm meeting this person for the first time. I have yeah, no yeah. idea who she is. Oh, you're so full uh, of it. That's but I've so gone, your faker voice. <laughs> I've actually gone uh, to sleep with her in my ear. So it's a strangely, oh, and I woke no. up in the morning and heard her in my oh, ear. Oh my God, I so know who this is. And I was like, <laughs> What the heck is this person doing? I said, I got to reach out, just have some fun with this. So, uh, Janet Arsmith, how are you? Hello, beautiful head feeder. How are you? Hello, lovely oh girl. My how are you? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Is this? Hey, hi, everyone. I'm Jeanette. Nice to meet you. Nice to hi, be Jeanette. here. Hi, Jeanette. Hang out and come play. <laughs> hey, well, like I said, I, I this is the first time meeting you. Uh, and we didn't do this. No prep. This is unscripted completely. Nice to meet you. Great voice. Love your voiceover stuff. You too. Uh, when I said that she was in my ear, everybody, it was uh, via a, a, a meditation that she recorded. So I highly recommend you just all you have to do is uh, Google that name and you'll see some amazing uh, work that she does you're also like i know that you have a background in you know acting and 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 uh and voiceover and all these kinds of stuff so good on you i know that world i, I don't know that world but i know how hard it is so kudos to you uh kudos to you for uh for having that uh, on your resume because let me tell you that's uh that's the toughest nails to get that kind of business for sure so listen great to great to meet you and i and i connected with you because it's in a clubhouse room with obviously jacqueline i i don't stalk her on there but I, when i turn on cloth when i turn on clubhouse I now i do I stopped, I was going to say, I stopped Jeanette, so I'm, I'm good with that. I stopped there her all go. the time. Yeah. So Jeanette, the, your connection with, uh, you know, with, with Jacqueline obviously is based around some of this subject matter we're talking about and so on. Let's just jump to the theme today. We'll definitely have deeper conversations another time. Just today's show is literally going to try to keep it moving along with, with yeah. the, with the theme here. What do you think of this theme? What, what about happiness for you? What is that? What is happiness? It's, it's whatever I want from one moment to the next. I'll, I'll tell you what Jacqueline knows that one of the, the gifts um, I've gotten this year is the remembrance of us not living in a uh, time release capsuled version of happiness where I have to hit certain markers before I allow myself to feel happy or joy or any of that. And what I realized was um, it probably from the pandemic, I know it existed before the pandemic, but especially during the pandemic, I think we all, you know, stood in these hard places. And how could I enjoy that this thing was happening in life? Some opportunity came up, but we're in the middle of the pandemic and people are suffering and this is happening. And standing in those opposing truths, I found that many people were kind of paralyzed, like frozen. Like, I, I don't, I don't want to really 
want to be joyous here because something is happening over here. And what I got released from spirit was just absolutely, you can honor both. You can feel all of the feels of what this experience is and stand in contrast to that and be okay, but don't wait because this is happening and you, and, and something in you is triggering you and wanting you to express joy and express happiness and to live it out. Because what I honestly believe is it all happens to help bring us the yin and yang that we need, right? The balance that we need so that we live and thrive through everything, that we have enough in our tank when the tough hits come. So if I have anything that I would want to just go whew, free gift today, don't, time release capsule yourself into waiting to feel joy or waiting to feel happiness. If it's there and it's resonating for you, then in, in, it, express it, embrace it, get all the good juicy juiceness out of it and just don't wait. Wow. Time capsule happiness. Wow. I love that. I love that. Uh, so, I mean, can you reflect on, I'm just thinking the things that you've, I know the conversations that you've had, um, again, they're not recorded, which means people can't go back and hear some of the things that you've discussed on in clubhouse and such so on. Shame, yeah, it is such a shame. Absolutely. It's such a shame. What kind of things, um, are you experiencing these days right now, um, on clubhouse and in those conversations that give you hope towards people finding happiness? What kinds of things do you find happen there that are keeping you going back and connecting with people like uh, Jacqueline and so on? Well, you, you are a beacon of hope and manifested goodiness, right? Because you, I happen to trip into a room where Jacqueline is. We often, you know, light attracts light and light like also attracts like. So we end up in, you know, similar spaces. And I walked into um, the back end of a moment and you were there. And then something with you resonated with something in me. And so now here we are. And who knows where this will ripple out. So my hope is in that people will start and continue to listen. Well, if you haven't been doing this, sit still. Give yourself a, a moment to sit still, shut the noise off, listen to the divine whispers, listen to those little leadings and guidings that seem to have nothing to do with whatever it is you've been so uber focused on and let it lead you and guide you into beautiful spaces on Clubhouse, off Clubhouse, into conversations with people, into new experiences, into new expressions of yourself. You know, that's another thing that I found that we have told like our inner child, when, when you think about happiness, I always, <laughs> Jacqueline knows, I always use this um, adage of a, a, a kid, like tiptoe anticipation, like, oh, what's next? What's coming? What's coming? And I don't have to have it in my hand to experience the joy and happiness of it. It's the anticipation, the, the, the oh, it's, it's here, it's coming, it's coming. And so when you allow yourself to do that, it's a beautiful thing, but often we have set our inner child in the corner and said, sit there, don't touch anything, don't move, don't ask for anything, don't look at anything, you just be well-mannered and sit there. And where is the inquisitiveness in that? Where comes the sense of adventure in that? Where do we unlock and unleash the other sides of us that lead us into the places of happiness and joy? I think if we would be open to new ways of experiencing happiness, our list wouldn't be so short. And so we wouldn't say, it, this has to be in place for me to have joy. This has to be what I need for me to have happiness. And you'd be led into some beautiful new spaces where you would uncover some new things that bring you happiness and joy. Wow, that is amazing. Uh, Jacqueline Wayne, these are the kind of people that you kind of bring around the world. Uh, how cool is this? Did you know each other before Clubhouse? And I'm not giving a shout out to the to that particular platform. I'm one of giving a shout out is to the ability to to like mindedness of people using technology to, to use it as a force for good. That's one of the things I like to say with I, I always applaud people when they're using their platform, their voice uh, as a force for good. And this is obviously an example of that and so on. Um, what, what, what makes you happy about seeing that face over there uh, and joined us today? Well, you know, Jeanette and I have met over many lifetimes. So <laughs> it's not like it's our first time meeting. But the funny thing about it is, is that you can meet people in your life. And Clubhouse is a fascinating way to uh, meet people um, that you never see. You only hear the power of their voice, the power mm. of their message, and how that personally touches you. Jeanette and I have never met in person. We've never had a visual So thank you, Peter. <laughs> this is the first time we've seen each other. In Are you real kidding? No, this is I it. I had no idea. I yes, swear, I had no idea. Yes, this is a gift. This is making me so happy. 
Oh, this is fat. Okay, that makes me happy. Thank you. I appreciate you telling me. That's why I'm like, I'm like, feel like I'm just blushing right now. It's like, oh my god. Um, (laughs) But the fun, the fun, because you know, um, you know, I love that Jeanette is in this space doing this because people always think LinkedIn is the place for business. You know what? LinkedIn is a place for everything. Right. It's it's for these conversations. Clubhouse is for these conversations. Instagram. The whole world is for these conversations, because what I've learned about Clubhouse and I know it's coming to LinkedIn, it's coming down the pipes, is that these are opportunities for us to have conversations together that matter. Everybody has different geniuses within them, a different perspective, different words that are going to elevate, inspire, bring wisdom in a different way to somebody else. And you never know. So great example, Jeanette and I shared a room last week on Clubhouse with exactly this topic. And Peter, you were there. What is happiness? We had, I think, 2,000 people go through that room that day talking about happiness. And what we know is that as much as we all said different words, we talked about different concepts, but we didn't. And we know that what I said touched somebody, what Jeanette said touched somebody. And so we had 2,000 people asking themselves that question and start answering it for themselves with shared ideas and perspectives from the collective. So how great is that? that those conversations get to happen. But, and I put a button here, it's like any other space. What do you fill in your algorithms with? What is your clubhouse hallway filled with? What's showing up for you? What conversation are you hopping into? Are you hopping into conversations about fights around COVID around the room? Well, or around the world, great. And that's what you're going to get, right? Or are you hopping into conversations that that are going to speak to a different aspect of you and this is what I always love about Clubhouse what what Jeanette does for me and so many other people is that it's like my daily affirmation I'm not an affirmation girl but yet when I go in and I speak from a place of heart that's a daily affirmation when I get to ask questions that I'm not sure about the answers for for myself I get 20 different versions asking a question I'm asking, and then I get to pick and choose what sounds right for me, what feels right for me. So my learning and growth personally over the summer from spending time on Clubhouse, well-choiced time, not random, but on purpose, has made me grow exponentially because now I don't just get in and talk about 365 give. It's Mm. giving me that bird's eye view, that chance to step back and see what it all means to me, all aspects and areas of my journey through this life. And I get to stand with, with beautiful people like Jeanette. I get to sit and listen to her and, and find a truth that I didn't even know was already there. And they're all there. When something resonates with you, it means it was already there. You know, she just has this gift of pulling it out of all of us and going, oh, yeah, Jesus forgot, forgot that. And it's just a remembering of what exactly what she said. She helps us remember. Oh, that is awesome. Hey, Jeanette, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's quite the compliment. She's a gift. If, yeah, I, I got to tell you guys, she's a gift. Sweat. Go, go to Instagram, get her beautiful meditations, get her morning process to make your life great. All of those things. Go into Clubhouse specifically just to listen to her. Um, her empowerment room is amazing. Um, I, I'm there with her, but don't come to listen to me. Come to listen to her because she just brings out the best in all of us. Can I love on Peter too in this moment? Because oh yeah, bring like have you look at this? Like, did you know his genius? Look at his genius. Let me oh tell you God. something. First of all, Peter, <laughs> your hair is giving me life, right? Ah. <laughs> yeah. your, your whole vibe, your whole isness is giving me life. So there's that. The second thing is, you know, you Jacqueline, you were mentioning about, you know how we kind of compartmentalize what we share on different platforms. And here's what I know for people on LinkedIn, high achievers, the business, the whole, you know, left brain people. What is as important in corporate America now that we know? Um, Because I consult in that space. Is IQ? Yep. Still very important. Absolutely. But your EQ and your AQ? Absolutely. Almost more important because people are finding that you can be genius in your specific focus zone, but it emotionally, what's your emotional quotient, 
right? What's your adaptability quotient? Because if those things aren't in play and in balance and in alignment, it's almost like your IQ is kind of a moot point. We can't tap into all the greatness, right? If you can't bring the balance of the others. And there's so many other cues to be considered in that. Let me just say that too. But I just want to focus for your topic, this happiness quotient. It is not a luxury to take care of ourselves and to tap in and plug into the things that make us happy and bring us joy. It is a responsibility to fill that tank. It's not a luxury. It's a responsibility. Oh, man, that is, you know, it's funny you're using those words. Uh, Renuka, my beautiful spouse, and I were having a conversation this morning where you're talking about, and, and these are two different subject matters, uh, but they, they, it just resonated the way you put that together there, this idea of a responsibility. Um, I was also, we were talking about uh, the idea of rights and privileges. Mm. And, so, and that's for another conversation. But when you said that about this response of taking responsibility, uh, it just it it, al- it felt like a parallel conversation uh, that it, or, that just happened in real time. I just wanted to mention that because I think that's another <laughs> topic that we can Absolutely. certainly uh, knock into. So I appreciate what you're saying because I know you you deal with a lot of leaders. You you speak to a lot of leaders, and so does Jacqueline. By the way, I mean what's interesting about Jacqueline? She just uh, ninja like moves within the world of business <laughs> and and philanthropy and then spirituality and just goodness and kindness and and then and you, and it's almost like. Wow, yeah, she can kind of, I can, you know, any room in the world you walk into, and if she's there, you're like, yeah, that makes sense. She can kind of, <laughs> she can kind of just go in there. Good rooms, that is. Good rooms, that is. Now, speaking of good people and good rooms, now, uh, Janet, I, I didn't even ask, uh, is it Janet or Jeanette? Sorry. Jeanette. Jeanette, I apologize. Thank you, Jeanette. And because we're meeting for the first time, and the fact, right. that, and the fact that you guys are meeting visually for the first time, know, see, so that's good. the stuff that brings me joy. See, you, you, I should have brought. I sent Jeanette this yesterday. This beautiful magazine that I get. Um, it has gratitude cocktails. So I should have brought us all a gratitude, <laughs> gratitude cocktail. cocktail. Oh. <laughs> Hey, it's your tea for now, but exactly. soon, girl, soon. Yeah. yeah, it's five o'clock with me every time. Like, it, it, <laughs> no, no problem to get me involved with that. They say you got to practice gratitude all day long. Why not That's in the true. form of a cocktail? I there you it. go. There you go. So, so uh, Jeanette, like, uh, can you stick around for a couple of minutes? Sure, sure, we sure. Know, I appreciate that. Please stick around with us right this second. And uh, what I'm going to do, because I want to stick around, I want to st- uh, uh, jump into uh, some of the things we just talked about. I do want to give a shout out because this was all unscripted. So you just brought up EQ. EQ is so important. EQ, IQ, all that kind of stuff. What a great conversation. I did have uh, a past show with uh, a wonderful, wonderful person. Her name is Teresa Quinlan. Q-U-I-N-L-A-N, Quinlan. Um, I don't have any of her graphics up right this second, but uh, she builds like emotional intelligence. Uh, she, she she works with that sort of a, um, a thought process with businesses. And I just love the idea of what you just brought up, EQ, IQ, because again, for me, you know, uh, you know, you can train EQ or IQ. You, I, I believe you can train that. I really do. You want to take a job. I would hire for attitude all day long, you know? And so, so to your point, that's another great conversation. We talk about leaders. Speaking of leaders, speaking of people, who want to have fun uh i got as this guy has been uh tuning in and is a super big fan of uh, jacqueline way super big fan Uh-oh. Uh-oh. oh yeah Good super coming. big fan Good coming. Look out. so uh, again i i'm gonna see if I'm we can bring his energy boom. i'm waiting for the boom <laughs> i'm gonna see if i can bring his energy up because he's normally pretty low-key oh, there you go. oh yeah the, so maybe, yeah yeah so, I love so maybe we'll, we'll bring him on and see Isn't what's going cool? on this feature like just dial him in and in they are yeah, yeah, hopefully, hopefully he's there. Maybe he's working. <laughs> yeah, and Jeanette, you don't, you may not know this about Peter, but he's a phenomenal producer. Like he puts I on can these tell. shows here. Like I can already tell. Oh my god! And you do this, right? So this is your world. Now I don't know if we're gone to a voicemail, but I'm going to guess. Is this Mr. Rob House? This is Mr. Rob House. I guess <laughs> this is me. I hope this is me. I'm really praying to me. <laughs> How are you, buddy? <laughs> Doing great. Wow, this is like the best conversations that I've listened to in a pretty long time. Oh. We're talking about time capsule release happiness. Right. Come on. What the heck is going on? <laughs> it is EQ, IQ nuggets. All right. Absolutely. It on the, it, these seeds are dropping on the soil of my mind. I'm just letting people know. Thank oh, you. Oh, man. <laughs> well, listen, We well, first of all, uh, thank you for being uh, 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 using your voice and platform for a force for good. You're always online. Uh, specific, I can only talk for LinkedIn specifically. I watch your posts. You're always getting your family involved, which always gives that wonderful, warm dynamic for people to understand that it's not, as Jacqueline said, it's not just business. 
uh, business it's you know it's the whole whole package and and people want to do business with people they know like and trust and you know when you have your family involved so you do that so well you're super creative with your music and your lyrics and when you freestyle brother i mean you say some stuff that come out like that, that shouldn't that, that that's just super cool stuff that's a gift and uh, i wish i had that uh, i wish most people actually had that gift to be able to use their language to inspire others let's talk about this uh, happiness uh, subject we're talking about uh i know that you always radiate that with people and you do your best to try to amplify happiness what does it mean to you what what is this subject matter all about for you what is happiness oh my goodness well first hi Jeanette. hello great to you're right down the street you're in Bowie, right <laughs> And uh, Jacqueline, I'm glad you text me. You always, when you text me, sometimes I just drop what I'm doing. <laughs> Come and see what you're talking about when I can do that. And then Peter, if Peter's involved in anything. I don't understand how you can get any better. I mean, I told him his voice is something that I'm actually jealous of. I really want to get my voice to sound like this. You know, I really do. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you, brother. But happiness to me, honestly, is loving yourself and loving others. And if you simplify it down to the simplest form, it's loving yourself. And loving yourself is accepting who you are, being grateful for what you have, and, love, and finding ways to love on yourself. And then turn it externally and loving others. Mm. It's big. It's like the other side of it. The other yin and yang. And loving yourself and then loving others. And of course, loving others, that's what this woman, the Jacqueline knows the way is all about. With, with 365 give and do one give. Giving. That's how you can love others. Give. It doesn't always take money. Sometimes just time, energy, a little bit of thought. But if you love yourself and love others, you're, you'll be going in the right direction. Um, even when you're feeling sad and depressed and low, if you go do something for someone else, you're automatically going to feel better just biochemically somehow. That's how you know how powerful that is. And Jacqueline can talk on that even deeper. So yeah. in a nutshell, in a capsule, love yourself and love other people. Oh, that's fantastically said, my friend. And I have your LinkedIn uh, profile up for people to connect with you and and resonate with you. I mean, you have a business automation, your business automation process uh, business. So I want to uh, do a shout out to that as well, because we all have to make a living here. So I want to make sure that people understand uh, that, you know, a lot of the things that you do in service of people is despite the fact that you actually have another business and, uh, you know, you spend a lot of time, you know, amplifying other people with your voice and your music. So kudos to you, my fine friend. Um, you know, you put Put out the humanologist and philanthropist and anytime you add all that uh, goodness in there i mean it's just um, i always want to make sure that i'm amplifying people that are doing good in the world um so so again you know, rob what i wanted to connect with with the fact that you and jack and i mean i know you're such a fan as i am as i am uh, of her as well um this idea of i mentioned it earlier i just want to know what your thoughts are on this about chasing happiness or getting to happiness because i just loved what uh what Jeanette just said about time capsuling this thing, but mm -hmm. you know what? I got to mm -hmm. tell you, I'm just, uh, I'm again, I'm, I'm kind of always as much as I try to be on here as transparent as I can. Uh, um, I think I do that, and it doesn't serve me. Uh, this idea of like when I get there, then uh, how does that how does that apply to you and what you're doing these days for happiness? Oh my goodness! I mean, it, I think it's, it's a great question. I think it's a question we should ask every single day because we have to reconfigure every single day and remix ourselves every day to get make sure we're in alignment. But we, we've all heard, you know, keep your eyes on the prize. And I think that's what people are doing. And that's what I do. And that's what we do unless we're, unless we're conscious of it. We keep our eyes on the prize and we're looking for the prize. But in essence, it's really keeping your eyes on the path. You keep your eyes on the path and where you're going, you'll automatically get prizes. And so chasing happiness is just chasing a goal. It's chasing an expectation. It's okay to have those things. It's okay to have the prize. But it's more important to know where your eyes are. If your mm. eyes are on the path, then you'll be in the present. And the present is the gift. That's why it's the same word. You type the word present in your phone, you'll get the gift, gift. You type the word gift in your phone, you get the gift, gift. So in order to open the gift is to live in the now. And that's keeping your eyes on the path. That's really a philosophical way. But just live right now is like the straight, straight cut to the chase. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> just live now. You know, in each moment will then present itself. Oh man, I love that. I love that. And again, as I said to you before, my friend, is that the fact that you use uh, your voice like you're doing right now um, as, as a force for good and, and reminding people that, again, staying present and your music does that. I mean, it does it for me as well. I mean, I, as a musician, I, that's why I think we have a kindred spirit when it comes to this idea of, um, of making sure that we're reaching people through ways that uh, 
connect us emotionally. And I know for me, I yeah. get very emotional when I play music. It, well, it depends on the subject matter, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. But I do, and, and you do that super, super well. Jacqueline, uh, this is a very good friend of yours. I know you want to do a quick shout out and, and chat with Rob. And uh, Rob, listen, man, I super appreciate you calling in, my friend. It's always good to hear you. Oh, man. Hey, yeah. my beautiful. How are you? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness. You know, I always love you pop into the show and the beautiful wisdom that you always share. What I love about you both, most of my friend, is that you're always true to who you are. That never changes. Um, I hope you will join us one day in Jeanette's empowerment room because you would be so perfect in there. And um, people need to hear your voice more because it is so powerful. And I know you do it in lots of places. But, you know, we've, I think Jeanette and I really come to realize that real time with real people in the moment is so remarkably powerful. Um, but, you know, how deeply grateful I am for you. And, you know, another sacred contract. I mean, you're bringing up all my sacred contracts in this world. Let me tell you today, you know, these are the people who you call brother and sister who you have never met in person, you know, in yeah. real time, touch and feel. And there's no doubt in my mind that Rob Howes and I have had a hundred lifetimes together. You know, we know this. It's just, mm -hmm. it's, we don't even have to. It was never a consideration. We just knew it from the minute that we met, you know, and it was perfect. So I love that you've come up and shared some of this today because, you know, we're all saying, I love it. We're all saying the same thing using different words that's going to hit somebody in a different way. And that's what I, that's what I love so much is that our, none of our messages are any different. We're just all saying them with different words because we know that different people hear different tones and different words and different things hit them based on their own perspective you know it's like there's seven and a half billion people sharing one planet but yet each of those seven and a half billion people live in their own little world right we mm -hmm. all live in our own little planet on this planet and so for us to continue to to help people understand and comprehend we all have to say it differently so that my little planet hits somebody else's little planet right mm. and then just yeah. maybe we might be able to share this planet one day peacefully together like what a concept that is the goal that, that is would be the goal right how can we <laughs> live together peacefully um and with respect and without judgment of each other in this world sharing this one little piece of rock right how do we do that together and we know that we can do this when we start with ourselves because if you're not in peace and harmony and happiness for yourself it's not going to be for everyone around you so when we start with us that just spills out right just spills out to everybody that you touch with your voice with these conversations in whatever you do in your work in your families Right. And that's what we love about these spaces. The gift that Jeanette is like, just go and listen to her people. She'll soothe your soul like every day. Uh, well, I can attest to that. Right? I agree with that. You, yeah, I, I know I that. Got it. I know I that it. Rob <laughs> talked about, uh, he mentioned voice and the power of a voice and so on. But let me tell you, yeah, I've, uh, I've listened to, uh, I listened to Jeanette's voice. So, uh, like I said, quite soothing and everyone just again, uh, uh, Jeanette R. Um, what are we, Ara Smith please, everyone, just make sure you kind of Google that and find and Clubhouse, by the way, if you're on Clubhouse on that new technology, but all the kids are doing, it's not kids, actually. Yeah, just go. Oh, yeah, we're kids. We're good. Yeah. You should have all the kids right here. All the kids are right here. That's right. That's, That's right. It. And Rob, you have an open invitation. And Peter, you have an open invitation. Come play, hang out. We call it the Chateau, but we we, we stock it full of bean bags. Everybody gets their own yeah. bean bag, their proverbial bean bag with your name monogrammed on it. So every time you show yeah. up, you pull out your bean bag and just pull up a chair and and just share and what i love what um jacqueline was saying is about the real-time ahas you know you mentioned it about everybody sprinkling it, it really is a seed you know um even here peter you've dropped many seeds today and jacqueline has come along and she's tilled the soil and pulled some weeds from around it and and then maybe i'll come sprinkle a little water and then rob will come in and he comes and he pulls out some more weeds and protects it from and so that's how those seeds of of beauty and wisdom come to be because everybody tends to nurturing the seed and we nurture each other. So I'm so thankful. I had no idea. This was so just like not even on my radar, th this invitation. Wow. And Peter just kind of hit me. And I was like, everything in me said, do it. I don't even know what it is really all completely. And then Jacqueline's <laughs> going to be there. Just go do it. And that's how you follow those, those, those divine whispers into beautiful spaces. Right. And oh. I saw you, Danielle. Yes. Yes. To relational intelligence. Yes. Yes. To that.
Yes, absolutely. Well, that's super well said. Thank you, uh, Jeanette, for saying that. And, you know, uh, that's uh, just, you know, again, uh, this is totally unscripted, obviously. So I'll just say it off the top of my head here. That's always my goal when um, I, I invite people out. I, I, I have I have such reverence for people's time. I have uh, and I want to make sure that if you if you say yes to something I'm doing, um, I never want someone to go, God, that was a way I, I want them to go. Wow, I really enjoyed that. Or they connected. Um, uh, if I reach out to you and that's just for anybody out there, if I reach out to you, um, it's probably going to be a, uh, an interesting experience for you. And I, I certainly uh, that, so I used to saying that again, that's what fills my soul. That's what makes me happy. So I super appreciate it. Rob House. Uh, in the house, in the I mean, house. man, oh man. Thank hey, you. listen, brother. Uh, I'm such a fan of yours. You already know that a musician to musician. I love it. I love what you do. Um, I love the fact that you support uh, people that um, that need uh, their own voice. And you and that's what I try to do as well. I hope that people understand that that's really some of my goal is always to amplify another voice, but especially ones that need to be heard. And uh, I know that you do that because you, 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 with your freestyling, you mention, uh, you know, subject matters and topics that people need to have these conversations with. So I, I appreciate you doing that, man. Yeah. I just want to make sure people understand what you're doing out there. It's, it's, uh, yes, there's a lot of fun. There's a lot of energy and love and all that kind of stuff, but there's purpose and intention behind it. So I appreciate that. I recognize that in you, my friend. Man, I appreciate you, Peter. Appreciate you having the technological savviness to have this tech. <laughs> <laughs> set up. I need to get in here. Thank you, 21st century as well for right. showing up. And thank you, Jeanette, for what you do. I will be in that room with my bean bag or whatever it is. <laughs> exactly. Shout out to you in Maryland. I'm right up the street in Baltimore. We got to, you know, bring your family superpowers activate. There you go. Yes. <laughs> hey, Rob, Love listen, you, we're, we're going to catch up again soon, brother. So I appreciate okay. you. And I'll be watching for your Freestyle Friday today or and yeah. over the next Fridays it's gotta as well. Be up. It's got to be up. Freestyle. So I'll be checking that out later on today when we're done here, buddy. Okay. Cool deal. Thank you. All right, man. Bye, you everybody. take care. Cheers, man. Oh, uh, see? Real cool dude. Uh, super cool dude. I yeah, know he's such a big fan of uh, Jacqueline. Uh, hey, let's just keep rocking and rolling, moving along. Uh, Jeanette, you still good for time? Uh, because, listen, uh, I don't want anyone ever feel obligated to hang around because, you know what? Uh, when I learn to keep these shows under 90 minutes, I'm going to do something good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do something good in the world when I can keep them to 90 minutes. But, you know... Uh, it's Clubhouse room. It's the same way. It's like, okay, how do we keep it up? Well, it's like, we've been here four hours. How oh, does yeah. it happen? Like, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, and again, transparent. And uh, here we are unscripted. But, uh, you know, I used to watch, and I still do every now and then, uh, Joe Rogan. Uh, of course, it's two, three, four hours sometimes for his shows. And when I first saw those things, I was like, I was like, Peter. And I mean, my brain was going like, gosh, um, four hours you're gonna sit and listen to an interview for four hours and i thought there's just no way you're gonna do that and then of course two three four hours go by and now that i'm doing these shows i mean i struggle to keep it down to 90 minutes so for me to to gravitate towards a three-hour show all day long <laughs> easy breezy easy breezy we haven't even brought out the guitar or the happy hours yet <laughs> i mean you know, time can fly. Now, let's keep along with this uh, subject matter here uh, uh, for Jacqueline. Jacqueline, look at this here. I just want to bring up a little clip. Uh, by the way, I don't know if everyone knows this, but see that person over there? Uh, that's TEDx royalty over there. Six million plus views, everybody. Six million, not 6,000. Six million. Okay, six million views right over there. Uh, so kudos to you for that. And uh, I want to run a quick little clip from from that talk. And I want to emphasize okay. everyone, please go out and have a look. All you have to do is go into YouTube, Google uh, Jacqueline Way, and a TEDx talk will come up, and you'll see you'll be one of six million who've had the uh, pleasure of watching that. But let's let's put up a little clip here. I've watched this in a long time. It's gonna be interesting. Well, yeah, yeah, no, it's a it's a kind little clip, but you know, more interesting. Okay. It's, it's what it's it's what you say. It's only a 10 little 15 seconds. But okay. what you say, because I think um you'll see where I'm going with this, because again, what is happiness in our topic today? I think it's amplified more than ever, uh, you know, over the last 18 months, as we all know. So let's have a quick uh, peek at this clip here and then we'll come back and chat about it. The World Happiness Report states at any one time. Over 220 million children and 1 billion adults suffer from anxiety, depression, and conduct disorders. Not exactly a pretty picture of happy people on a happy planet, now is it? Wow. I mean, wow. That's that. So that's from a f several years ago, a few years ago. Um, 
And I don't think that's moved very much, Jacqueline. Oh, no, it's, it's moved. It's moved oh, down. it's gone the other it, way, right? It's gone the other way. You know, the latest research uh, over this COVID time period is like talking a 30% increase, depending on the age range that you're looking at. Anywhere from 14 to 30%, depending on the age range. And the biggest increase is in the children. Right. Wow. They're the ones that have suffered the most from not having social contact, for being um, out of school, for being in such a stressful, energetic world, both at home because our parents, parents have been under so much stress. Listen, I suffered from that myself for the first little while. Like that was a big shift for everybody when we first went into lockdown. Yeah. And as parents who, you know, we have very, if you're a homeschooling parent, you chose that path. That was something that you wanted to do. But for the rest of us, and listen, I got to tell you, I, I thought about homeschooling a lot um, because I always thought I could be that parent, but I'm so clear I'm not that parent. Mm. And so when we were forced to homeschool, that was like, holy crap, right? I actually started happiness school at my house and it lasted for like two weeks. And then I went down like the vodka drain at four o'clock, you know, and, and it all unwinded. And this is when I started asking myself this question, what is happiness? Because I found I was so stuck. Mm. And but people are stuck there, right? And even though we're coming out of COVID, things have changed, all of this stuff. Like, are we really coming out of COVID? Not really. You know, the reality is we're not. The it's still around, it's still going on, it's still happening in whatever version it is right now. And our kids are still suffering because now we're seeing the separation in our communities. We're seeing the separation and differences in the schools between all of those crazy conversations, masked, unmasked, vaccinated, unvaccinated. So the stress response is only increasing. And our kids never had that chance to recover. Right. right? We didn't have the chance to get out and recover. And we've just gone into another stress response. Yeah. So we are going to continue to see this increase. I think it's so much about what Jeanette and I, and I, we haven't never had this conversation. So maybe I'll just say it's what I'm doing, but what our conversations inspire is, is how do we bring people to that place for themselves? How do you find your own inner light, your inner love, your inner happiness, your alignment, all of these words, EQ, all the ones that we talk about, they're the same version of the same thing. Yeah. But how do we do that for people? Because there's no recovery time for people right now. Things are just changing and continuing and so fast. And what we know is for the, for the generation, you know, adults are adults. We're, we can't do a lot for that. But how, what about the generation that's gotten lost in between? And how are our children and the younger people, university, that whole like Gen X, Gen Z going back, how do we help them best? thrive not survive thrive right now and i and, and it's possible but that number's only increased what i said in that talk for me doesn't change yeah. what i said doesn't change for today how do we help people find their own happiness how do we help people create that for themselves in this world that's just a little chaotic little but chaotic. what i know is that it's possible but we need to help move that needle in a different way in and in every word every language everything that we talk that's the universal language of what Jeanette and I are talking about today yeah we're using these platforms to have these conversations hey I took the uh, liberty uh, as you can imagine uh, when I saw that clip I wanted to bring up there's a graph that I found believe it or not be able to see this. Uh, yeah so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try it I'm going to put that full screen for everyone for a second here and yeah. show it to you um let's go here for example mm. Just, uh, there it is. That for a second. So there's the there's some of the stats from 2021. Um, yeah. I know you went into the again the World Happiness Report, and and this particular report right now again talks about uh, uh, you know the psychological impact that which is your you know your um, x y axis or your x axis and then your y axis. Um, so long story short, the, the red uh, line is talking about the immediate fear of the lockdown. So very high, short, and then of course it, 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 uh, it, uh, it uh, peters off, if you will. The immediate response to the pandemic is the, is the next wave that you see there. Um, the third one is actually the insufficient mental support, so the mental health support. Um, that's, that was the yellow line that you see there. But what's interesting to me is this, this, this the long term. So the long-term consequences, the recession, the unrest, the poverty, the, the unemployment, uh, the new 
people losing homes and businesses and and family members by the way i mean i definitely do not want to suggest that it's all an economic impact it's 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 spiritual emotional uh, family yeah. it's all of so that line as you can see doesn't seem to have that hump uh that bell curve it it seems to be uh one that's just continuously rising and if it plateaus and then but it doesn't seem like it's going to be coming down very soon only because the insufficient mental health support is not there as well so um i just wanted to share that because i just thought you know to your point of what you talked about in in that clip uh from that ted talk which i hope everyone goes out and sees is that it it seems if anything the, the needle has moved in the wrong direction and the last 18 months has only amplified that um, and the stats seem to, to to support that, sadly. Jeanette, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one. Yes, please. Yes, yes please. Yeah, I, uh, I was just taking it in for a moment. It's, it's one thing to know something, you know, innately. And it's another thing when you, it's like, bam, right in front of you <laughs> when you see it so clearly. So I, I just was breathing it in for a moment. And then I, the first thought I had was, wow, now I understand why so many of us um much like firefighters who run toward the fire now i know why so many of us light bearers were running toward platforms like this and others and clubhouse and different ones now i understand why um the first after i think it was mid-march i had this strong unction and leading to get on uh, facebook live and youtube for 21 days straight just kind of doing just talks, holding space for people to talk through things. And I would bring on health and mental health specialists and, and spiritual leaders and different things. And, and now when I look at it more broadly, I was like, oh, we were all called to the fire. Like we were all called to the fire, right? And so for even that that bell curve, right, we're talking about the long-term consequences. I had heard that, that um, I think I, I mentioned that in a room we were in not too long ago, Jacqueline, about we don't know the full impact yet of what we've been through and what we're going through. And um, oh, no, it was, it was in one of the acting rooms because I was even saying, they were talking about why people act a certain way. You have to understand that every type of person is attached to that yellow line. CEOs are attached to that line. Government leaders are attached to that line at the federal, state and local levels. You know what I mean? Uh, people in faith based industries are attached to that line. There's nobody that that line doesn't run through. So when you're encountering people now and you think, well, they should be don't don't think anyone should be anywhere. We just don't know. We just don't know. And so we have to just keep showing up, sharing light. My banner is under the acronym of EIEIO to empower, inspire, engage, entertain, and inform people in original ways. And mm -hmm. it's because of this. It's because of this. Because under that, like you were saying, Jacqueline, everybody gets what they need. It might be healing is what I need. How I see myself, I get it. How I see others, I get it. Even Peter, how you're doing today, you know, you're bringing information in original ways. You're bringing connectivity in original ways. You're bringing um, significance in, in original ways. You're helping us to see our give back through Jacqueline's work, 365, in original ways. And all of those things touch our five basic human needs of certainty, uh, of, of variety, of love and connection, of growth, of significance, of contribution. And so you... Keep doing what you're doing, sir. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Hey, listen, I appreciate that. That was very, very kind of you. Um, listen, I love everything you just said there because, uh, and, you know, even the, the last part, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> received, received. But, 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 yeah, I received. Just, I'm not We're a good practicing. Receiver. No, no. I'm practicing. She's practice. helping you build your practice. muscle. <laughs> received. That's it. Received. received. Thank, Thank you. Appreciate receive. that. Oh, and, and someone threw that up there just while you have your mug there. I just want to show you that uh, there. Someone gave you a good shout out for your mug. Love you. Thankful. Mug. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <There> you <laughs> uh, I love I love what you just said about uh, who the faces who are on that line. I think that was just so impactful to me when I was listening to you. I think there's something there's just something. Uh, gosh, I wish my vocabulary was bigger. Um, I wish. Um, I wish we would all take that time to recognize the humanity in each person as we meet them, despite their title. Like you said, there's yeah. CEOs on that line. There's uh, there's there's airline pilots. There's people that work in this, you know, people who in this health sciences, you know, uh, frontline medical workers right now are incredible. You, you might be able to take a heart physically as a surgeon out of one person and put it into another. 
but that person is still under a tremendous amount of stress and could be sitting on that line. Yes. Um, and they, and the essential workers, all these, so all these faces, moms and dads and uncles and brothers and cousins and everything that we can think of. And then you could put the professional titles next to them and so on, but they're all on that line. And I think that, that if we can use that in our tone, as we speak to people and communicate yes. with people, um, it, it resonates more. And, and like you said, it was something to sit there and kind of take it in, wasn't it? Just it was, I just had to kind look of at the data, it. right? Uh, you know, what hit me though, Peter, too, when you were just saying the thing of, uh, you, you, you mentioned our essential workers and then, um, you were mentioning parents. I just had this little download for those of you who were parenting in a pandemic. Now I don't have children. I have godchildren, and I live close to them. So I got to see Jacqueline, what you were talking about, that whole being thrust into, uh, you know, teaching and parenting in a pandemic. But grace is the word I extend now. Oh. Give yourself grace. You don't have to have it perfectly all together. You just have to show up and keep learning, getting feedback, what worked, what didn't work, and then do it. Uh, keep doing it better the next time. You know, you know more, you learn more, you do more, mm -hmm. right? But grace, I think, Peter, is the thing that is what we need to extend. Grace, not only for others, because I love what you said about that. I wish people would just think about that before you have that in interaction with somebody to mm -hmm. understand that we're all on that line, right? And, mm -hmm. and, and before we got to that yellow line, there was a whole nother set of lines that we were on. <laughs> before we even got to the yellow line. Okay. And so grace for others, but grace for myself, grace for myself. I don't have to have it all together. If you need a nap, listen to your body, go take a nap. If you need some sort of self-care, go, go do what you need to do for you. You know, because that's how we, until that other line comes back up for, with support resources and other things from the outside, we're going to have to be the support from the inside out. Listening to my body, listening to my mind, listening to my heart. What does my body need right now? You know, that is going to be so key. Yeah. Give yourself grace. I love that word, by the way. Listen, I, uh, one of my favorite songs I'll just share with you guys. Um, uh, again, um, uh, I guess I'm connected somehow, some way to this space of, uh, spirituality and music and how it flows and all that kind of stuff. But one, and I'm, and I'm certainly not a religious person quote, I'm not a doctrine person. But I, I just, I, I, when I want to play a song that moves my heart, I'll, and I'll use a mandolin to do it, is Amazing Grace. Oh my gosh. And so I just love uh, the concept of grace. I just love the concept of finding grace within all of your communications and how you are. I also want to say this, uh, I think this, and because again, it's, this is unscripted uh, and, uh, uh, and I, I want to share, and I'm, again, I'm always um, trying to be a little bit more transparent with some of the things that go through uh, my mind and my life and my experiences and so on, is that I just want to uh, remind anyone who's watching this and listening to us speak right now, uh, and, and I'll talk about me specifically because it's, again, all I can use is my own, my own life experience is that, um, People might think I, it sounds like I have it to get, listen, I, I struggle like everybody else. I struggle with confidence. I struggle with understanding my role in this world. I understand, I, I, str I struggle with the idea of, of giving and receiving grace. Uh, struggle with all that. So if you're struggling with that, you know, that's one of the things I keep saying to myself, Peter, embrace that. Embrace the fact that you struggle with it. Know it that you are. Because once you're aware of something, that's the step forward of, of getting it uh, either fixed in your mind or in your life or in your soul is recognizing it. So uh, when you talk about grace, that's something that I just I want to be that. I just really want to be more graceful um, because, you know, the things that I say here in my house <laughs> might not be said here. And, uh, and, and that's, again, the ability to be able to pick and choose between again, what kind of energy you want to put out to the world. So anyway, I just, I just wanted to add to that. I, I really appreciate that. Wendy, good to see you, Wendy. Thank you for always, uh, and you said, what a blessing to listen uh, in on these beautiful souls. You got that right. I mean, these are just amazing people. And Wendy, just so you know, and thank you for being a supporter of the show. Uh, and please reach out to these beautiful souls right over there. Uh, this is the first time they're meeting as well. I mean, they know each other, but I mean, yeah. just visually. <laughs> And I'm excited. I'm excited for that. I, I just, I'm saying, hey, I can't say. It. And look at this. If there's a oh, person, Ms. Asha. if there's a person that I just want to say hi to right now, it's Asha Lalai, uh, just like the song, La 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 La. So you know, uh, and that's how you say it. Hello, beautiful people. Greetings from Netherlands. Great to see you, Sister Jacqueline and brother. Hey, listen, right back at you, Asha. Uh, Asha is one of those souls, man. I'm telling you, please, everyone, just go out and Google that 
right there. That name right there. Just Google that and go look around and and see what resonates with you. Um, she resonates with me, and I know Jacqueline. You've had some great uh, conversations with her as well. So and. Jen so I think there's another, another soul right there, another yeah. soul sister potentially for you. So thank you, Asher. We appreciate that. The Netherlands. Hey, listen, this is international. This it. is an international hey, show. Listen, I want to, can I give a quick shout out to Melanie? Melanie, I just want to let you know, I see you and I see your comments. They've been absolutely beautiful. So just yes. thank you for your continuing participation and all the beautiful words that you're putting up. Yes. And even though my glasses are not on, I can see them through my blur. Yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to shout you out. <laughs> hey, listen, that's why these are on, just so you know. No, exactly. All of us, all of us, exactly. honey. Okay. It's all our young. This is all the young. Like, you you, you missed my laughing. first my first part today, Jeanette. And I said I brought my lioness mane today. Yeah. because uh, the weather is just like uh crazy for my hair. I'm just like, I'm going au naturel today, but my my glasses keep my hair back while I'm doing these. <laughs> hey, listen, rock and roll works, rock and roll works. I, I appreciate your comments earlier. I just want to say something, uh Jeanette, that I thought was funny this summer for me in August. Um, I have a cousin of mine in, who's in central Canada in Ontario who was, you know, just reaching out to some people in her, her network in marketing and in branding and, and maybe even someone who could be an agent or something like that uh, for me. And she said, uh, hey, I want you to listen to this guy. Listen to this guy. And uh, so she she put on one of the shows like this, uh, but she didn't put the video on. And then she put the video on. And, and, and the person's response was this. She goes, his voice doesn't match his hair. <laughs> See, for me, it works. Like, I for me, so the whole it. thing, it's yeah. like you're a whole I, yeah. vibe. You are a whole vibe. Uh, I get that. Oh, listen, I appreciate his that. I get... didn't match his hair. I love That's that. That's what I thought. I thought, like, what does that mean? I was thinking whether she doesn't like my hair or doesn't like my voice. I was thinking... <laughs> I didn't. I, I couldn't read between the lines. I didn't know what she said, but I just thought it was funny. She said, "Yeah, keep doing you because this works." Hey, that's all I know. It's all I know. Doing it's, you. It's, it's, it's all I know. Hey, listen, we're going. We're getting to uh, near. Listen, I kept it uh, uh, under ninety as best I could, but we just passed it. So, which means that uh, we have uh, a last segment that I want to bring. And uh, uh, Jeanette, if you can stick around, this is um, this is fun stuff because I, okay. I, I always I always like taking people in another direction. <laughs> Uh, in this one right here, we uh, there's just so many big subjects, and we talked about happiness. And uh, you know, even though happiness is a is, is a fun and light subject, sometimes obviously there there's there's depth to, to that conversation. So uh, I don't want to ever belittle the idea that happiness is just feeling good for a few minutes. Uh, it's not that. What we're trying to do today is just have this conversation. And even if this fell on your plate for 30 seconds or a minute or two and touched your life in some different way. Um, uh, then then the purpose has been met and the intention has been met uh but i always like to kind of you know i have people like jacqueline and yourself here and i just want to go a little deeper so, so yeah. Incoming. yeah so get ready here we go we're going to do uh a little going deep that's what we're going to do Okay, we're going deep. Yeah, we're going to go deep right now. That's what we're going to do. Okay, so I'm going to listen. These any one of these subjects or questions uh, could be a show. So uh, you know, l honestly, uh, just just off the top of your head, you know, uh, we can go a little bit deeper with them in the future. Uh, but they're big questions, and I love them, and I want to hear what you guys think. This is questions I've asked. So I'm going to set this question up for you. When I traveled to Rwanda. And I interviewed people in Rwanda uh, post genocide. I actually sat with people who not only experienced genocide, but also participated in it. I actually sat with people who next to each other, where one person committed genocide with the other person's family. So that's the kind of depth of conversation I was having with people. And it, and it moved me to every single moment, moved me to tears of 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 this question that i had to ask them because it, it it's just it's just in my mind that that it needs to be asked and i think these are big questions that uh that 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 we can all at least linger on when we start talking about what's good and what's bad and what's right and what's wrong in our own world so let me ask you this question and each one of you can please jump in and we'll start with jacqueline and maybe uh jeanette you can ask this one what do you think about humanity is it inherently good or is it inherent evil and then taught to be good? What do you think of that? Jacqueline? I think we are inherently not just good. I don't think there's always good and bad. That's a that's a judgment call, good and bad. Um, I think we're we're born being loving human beings. I think our bodies give us the tools 
to facilitate that further in our life. But I think we are born loving human beings, every single person on this planet, whether, listen, I, I come from, I've got three boys who are adopted mm. and I know those boys were born from love and they are love. And I think that good and bad or evil, whatever terms you want to use, those are human constructs and judgments. Mm. Um, but I, I firmly believe that every human being has all they need within themselves, which is love and can choose to bring that out in themselves, out to the world, um, or it's hidden. And it depends who you're surrounded with, who you learn from in your life as a child, how you're programmed, and then how you bring that out. Um, but as you were saying, Peter, I think that even when we're programmed not as good as we say, that innately we have that love within ourselves and it is how have we brought how is that being brought out how how do you listen to those whispers as Jeanette says and how is that brought out in your path if you had met me when i was 16 years old i would not have been judged as a good girl let me tell you but somewhere along my path somewhere along my journey it's been brought out in me right and, and not good just the love has brought been brought out in myself to share with the world mm. and to empower within the world that's just the path that I choose to follow because I listen to some some really beautiful whispers and calls in my lifetime. So I believe that we all have the good uh, and the love within us. The evil, you know, you can say it's brought out, it's programmed, it's taught, all of those things. Um, I, I just don't see it as as clear cut as good and evil or good and bad. Okay, fair enough. No, Jeanette's got a beautiful answer to this. I'm, I'm going to sit on this one and record this one, Peter. No, don't do that. <laughs> I just tell you what my heart is saying. I mean, let me say the basis for me stepping into this conversation is I've always been a very spiritual person, even from a child before I got introduced to like organized religion and Christianity and all of that. I've always been a very spiritual child. And I will say, in all honesty, <clears throat> I'd probably get kicked out of both clubs because there are things about both and that work for me. Um, personally, I believe that we are born from love, that we are one with oneness in the divine and the divine is love, not has love, but is love. And so we come from love. So you have to be the image and likeness of what that is, which is love. I do believe that when we introduce free thought and free choice and with that, you encounter things like fear and not enoughness, the feeling of not enoughness. And any kind of low vibration scarcity mindset that says, I have to compare and compete with you because if I don't get mine, you might take it. Or um, if I let you have yours, you'll diminish me. That then from there we see all kinds of um, evil things born. And I say evil in the sense of a, a focus to kill, steal, and destroy. It could be killing your sense of of hope. It could be destroying your sense of self-worth. Um, there's many ways to kill, steal, and destroy. Um, you can steal somebody's hope. I've seen it happen in relationships, you know? So I think in that sense, those things evolve much like Jacqueline, you were saying out of, um, out of our circumstances, situations, and limited beliefs that there's just not enough on this big, beautiful ball for us all. So. Yeah, wonderful. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you, Jeanette. That's a that's a fantastic uh, answer. And and again, no right or wrong to any of this. I mean, just I'm bringing I'm bringing up some really big things just uh, because we have such great people and great thinkers here. And I just want I got my skin vibrating. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, let me ask you this. Then this is something that uh, that that uh, I just love this question. And Jeanette, Jeanette I'll I'll start with you, seeing you're here right this second. Um, this idea of soul, I love. The concept of soul and, and I, you hear a lot about spirit and and these kinds of things um these words soul and spirit are they the same what do you think of that um i know that the words are interchangeably used um but for me um your spirit is the thing that once you your body says i'm tired goodbye your spirit returns to that from which it came and wherever you believe that is back into oneness with the divine your soul incorporates your mind your the other things that help process but your spirit can never never be tethered never be tethered and i i get why we often um 
interchange them because what's the word that people use all the time? The woo woo. Um, the woo woo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure. Right. It's like it's all woo woo when you start talking about so you know. But um, but I think that um, if it, depending on what your vantage point is, because you mentioned the thing about you know spirit spiritual, um, organized religion or doctrine in doctrine, what people are indoctrined in that can take on a lot of different, um, things too. But for me, soul, psyche, mindset, those types of things is very different than what my spirit is. Got it. Uh, that's fantastic. Um, what do you think of that Jacqueline Wayne, your soul versus your spirit? Mm -hmm. Are they the same? You know what they they are and they aren't. You know, as as Jeanette said, you know, they're people use them based on you know your own uh, your own beliefs and use them interchangeably as well. Um, you know, completely agree with what Jeanette has says. You know, I I think that but you don't have to, baby. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's, it's not. I don't have to. It's it's it is my belief system. It always has been. You know, I, I was brought up in a home that. Yes, we had, we did the same thing, right? We went to church, but then we stopped. Mm -hmm. And then I was taught a different way, you know, by my mother. Mm -hmm. She, she's an NLP practitioner. So that whole lifestyle teaches you the different parts of yourself. You know, would I, would I separate them out completely and totally? You know, I it, probably, I wouldn't so much for me. Spirit and soul is very much um, an intertwinable word for me. And it almost... I'm so clear on my spiritual self, my soulful self. I'm so clear on that energy that shows me the way that guides me that's in me. I almost thought it was outside of myself for a long time, then kind of popped in and, you know, showed me this way or that way. I'm no longer that, you know, I, I know it's within me versus the God that lives up here in heaven somewhere. Um, so for me, they can be interchangeable. Um and and the words don't mean so much to me because there is no word for it. Mm. So maybe that's it for me is there is no word because it's not a word. It's it's a feeling um, that I feel within myself. And it's like the Tao, right? Um, yeah. You know, the Tao to me. And I never knew I chose this. But if if for those of you that know the 365 Give logo, the circle on the outside is a painting that represents the Tao. And it also means the way. So the way or path of your life, which happens to be my last name. I never made the connection how intertwined they all were when I chose that symbol until later, until I was able to step back and see it a little bit. But really, in the meaning of the Tao, there is no way for the there is no word for the Tao. It's 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 more than that. The same with God and the same with spirit and the same with soul. There actually is no word. That's just our translation in the human experience. So there is no word. So that's why they're interchangeable for me, um, because you can use whatever word works for you. Um, I'm just clear what it is for me. Awesome. OK, super appreciate that. Again, listen, we're just throwing out some pretty big things here. And it's because I have you I guys. That. This is why I, I love remember. that. Let me. Oh, I wanted to say to Jack, I never knew that about your logo. That's so that's so cool. And I and I love to that. Um, so when I think of clear, pure consciousness, that's when I think of spirit. And that's what makes yep. the differentiation for me. Right. I love that about all the synchronicities between that for you. That is Isn't so that cool. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I listen. I agree. I love that about the yeah about the way and uh, the fact that your name is way. And uh, I, there's just there's a book right there for you. There's a title right there. How about this last one for the two of you? Uh, you know, listen, no right or wrong. Can we get this. like a crock pot, like a <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, listen, <laughs> didn't, didn't, like didn't my producer get it. back to you? Didn't my producer <laughs> send all that? I mean, come on, we're gonna get to that. That's where we're going to talk about that actually after we're done here. We do, <laughs> we do need some sponsors. We do need some uh, knives and pots. No, your voice and everything. I feel like it's it. All right. Well, this is not a great bridge going into this question, but here okay. we go. Uh, okay. Jacqueline, I got you here for the last one. Um, again, just no right or wrong, but just love to take your take on this one. Um, what do you think happens when we die? Oh, I'm so clear on that. That's an easy one for me. My kids ask me that all the time. They're, they want to know, right? You know what? I want to know. Here's a really easy explanation. Go watch the animated movie Soul. Soul. <laughs> because really, it is the closest perfect version of 
what I feel and how it all works, you know? And, and it's beautiful because it's done with such, oh, fun and happiness and clarity. And the message is so clear, but I'm so clear. It actually upsets people sometimes because I'm so clear on it. You know, my mother's um, going through a situation right now where she, she just got a biopsy done. We're waiting for the results. Mm. And she's very fearful, understandable. Not her first round at the, the kicker at the can with cancer. And, you know, I can sit with her in such clarity because, and I'm not saying I'm not going to cry or I'm not going to be upset when she transitions from her body. But what I know for sure, without a doubt, is she's not gone. Mm. I have the ability to connect with that beautiful spirit that I've called my mother. We had a contract before we ever came. That's not going to go away. That never goes away. So I know, and I'm clear, I think what we're scared about is the process of dying. How are we going to die? Yeah. We're not scared. When you're, once you're dead, you're dead. You're not scared once you're dead. We're afraid of the process of how are we going to die? Like we'd all love to just go to sleep and then it's done and then up you go, right? Or we stand in judgment of our life right now. Did I sin? Did I not? Whatever it is. There's no judgment day. That's my belief. There's no judgment day. We're all part of the one. There is no big golden gates and God who's going to stand in judgment and said, did you do this right or did you didn't? Right. That's not my belief. Mm. And that's cool. And if other people have that belief, but the suffering and the hell is that belief that we carry around on this planet that we have sinned. Right. Mm -hmm. And that we're not perfect. And that's our suffering in our heads right on this planet today is the suffering that we have to because we're not good enough. We haven't done something right. I'm not as good as that person. Oh, my God, I, I, I sinned. I smoked a cigarette. I kissed a boy behind the shed. Whatever that is that has been implanted as the programs is that you're not good enough. And that's the biggest suffering that we suffer. So when we die, to me, oh, my God, that's freedom of, okay, I'm done with this one. Give me the next, right? Give me the next. What do I, I get there next? I love the fact you did mention the soul movie, though. I mean, that movie, to well, me, I'm that. watching, was like, yeah. wow. Yeah, yeah. And I agree with you. It's worth a second watch. There's no doubt about that. Of course, the music's in, intertwined with it for me. Yeah. So that's I awesome. love it. Oh, yeah, you're a great lesson, right? This that's is right. a great experience. So, so enjoy music. this experience and, you know, have Maybe. fun with it, man. Just play with it. Totally. Jeanette, what do you think of that? Well, you know, back to where we came from whence we came, right? Um, I do I have a different thought on it in terms of there's another great movie. I don't know if you've all seen it. It's called What Dreams May Come with Robin Williams. Mm. And um, the if any if there was any judgment, if there was any quote unquote hell is the one that we create for ourselves. Right. Um, the, the beliefs that we have around ourselves, um, the shame, the guilt, the uh, the the regret, the those things that we anchor ourselves to. And so, um, you know, as a person who also operates within the um, the environment of a uh, I guess what most would say uh, the the confines of Christianity I, I find that how we define what hell and heaven is you'll figure it out when you get there you'll you'll know it when you when you get there um, but I do believe that that's why it's important to do the work here to release ourselves from anchors of guilt, of shame, to work mm -hmm. through those things that um, undoing the doing that I'll put it that way, undoing the doing um, so that we can be much better to ourselves and then in turn, much better to other people. You know, I never want to be someone who causes someone else pain. Mm. or releases into them a hell on earth because now they have to dig through and, and work through some trauma that I was a part of, right? And I know, I do believe that all things work together, but I just don't want to them have to work together through that because of me, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so um, I believe we return to love and I believe that anything else that has to be worked through, that's the hell of it all. You know, <laughs> that's today. That. That's today. That's, that's the you hell know, of it all. I love that. I we love have that. we've had so many good teachers, and, and Jeanette talks about this all the time. But if you thought of it this way, 
And that if you just lived your life from the place of love, okay, not that perfect, not that you're not going to get in an argument with someone or anything else, but if you came from that place of love, that there is nothing to, you know, you're going to flow that out. So you're not going to go and kill somebody. If you're coming from a place of love, you're not going to go out into the world and kill somebody. If you're coming from a place of love, you're not going to go steal from somebody, right? Because when you're filled up from the inside, there's no need to go out there doing some of that, right? So when you fill yourself up from the inside, you're not going to have those sins that some define in the world, right? Because you're coming from a place of love. I know when my greatest sins have been committed in my own life, it's because I, I haven't been enough for myself. You haven't been enough for yourself? Myself. I'm not filled from the inside, right? Right. Yeah. You know, it comes back from that idea of where people suggest, you know, it's like, and I've heard, I think I've heard it. I mean, I know Oprah said it, but I mean, I know that she probably found it somewhere. It's this idea of, do you see me? Do you hear me? And do I matter? Mm -hmm. And the idea when people can't be heard, they want to be seen because yep. they want to be mattered. And, and sometimes being seen means I got to go and do something that's probably yep. not so Whatever. Right. 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 Going right. for looking for love in the wrong places, right? right? Looking for that love in the wrong places that may hurt someone else. Yeah, right? absolutely. absolutely. Your audience is the bomb too, Peter. They've uh, been just no, great. Melanie's comments. office. Yeah. These, the, listen, we have some of the. I mean, what I love is again they just. I love up, that, Rhonda. Yeah. That, that yeah. we put up some great Put-up ideas. My glasses on. I, I ask every time for our guests specifically, but even people watching, go back through the comments because there's people here that. Yeah. again radiate wisdom and and experiences that that maybe one of these things will resonate with you and and i think that that's what's super important and like i said melody is such a great writer i, mm -hmm. I super appreciate uh, her being here and rhonda again she always has some uh, great insights and her videos are awesome too it's all about being awesome. outdoors back uh -huh. to nature all these kinds of things and so on so uh and hey you are whoever said this you are super welcome just amazing conversations with uh people uh, like these two beautiful people right next uh i i love that now now listen uh now you guys if you've been so patient with me i'm gonna tell you something you've been super patient both of you guys have been super patient and i uh, i can't thank you enough for just kind of doing this we i reached out to uh jeanette like i said you didn't know what the heck was going to be done <laughs> You didn't know I knew I what I was getting into. Like. Yeah, ja Jacqueline knew. She, that's why she, she got the hair going, which I so appreciate oh, that. I so I appreciate it. that. I love it. So I don't want to pre uh, proceed for you guys to want to stay. But if you do, I would love it. But I, I'm going to do something that, again, Jacqueline, this is part of this process that you're talking to me about all the time and you're pushing me. And I, I've never done this before. I've never done this before. And it obviously uh, I'm trying to break something here. That's why I pushed it to the end of the show because there's probably only, you know, uh, my wife watching and, you know, Melody you know, and Rhonda. <laughs> I'm here. I have nine minutes. I have a voiceover I have to cut, but I'm okay. here. Okay. I'm going to do this so quickly, but I need to do it. Jacqueline, this is part of my therapy with what you've been helping me with. So, so stay with me. So you guys stay here with me. Okay. I'm going to put you in, I'm going to put you in, in, in the, in the green room though, okay. just for a second. I'm just going to put you in the green room. Okay. Okay. It's just for a second. And uh, this is, uh, again, everybody, I, I appreciate, first of all, everyone being here on the show and all these kinds of, it's just been fantastic, hasn't it? I mean, come on. It's unscripted. Uh, we're just hanging out. We got two beautiful people that tuned in, uh, callers like Rob and, and Asha has been putting in comments and Melody and Rhonda. And, hey, listen, I, I appreciate everyone doing that. But hey, I'm going to do something I've not done before. So here we go. Um, I always get asked this question and, um, and, and I just, I don't answer it very well. So I'm going to try to answer it right now. Here's a question I get a lot. How can I work with red TV? I don't promote myself. I don't ask people for things. Uh, I'm, I, if you want someone to promote you, <laughs> you found the right guy. I can do that. When it comes to talking about me, not so good, not so good. So I really, really struggle with that. So I'm going to push through right this second because I do get asked this question a lot and I do want to work with people and I do want to keep red TV going. And I want to, uh, I, I want to keep st in this space because I know that my voice is supposed to be used as a force for good. And what allows me to do that is to help other people get what they want so I can get what I want. And in exchange for services and money allows me to put this back into red TV and then do this. 
Uh, so this is why I need to address the fact that I never ask people for business. I never ask people for help. Um, but I definitely want to uh, address the idea that people ask me all the time, how can I work with Red TV and what services? So I'm just going to throw up a couple ideas for you that if you want to work with uh, Red TV and myself, I would love to hear from you. So first of all, number one, i always looking for a sponsor or advertising partners for this show. Not this specifically show, the unscripted show, uh, but I also am in live in uh, live in conversation with uh, the, the many people that I've talked to around the world. And this is what I love doing. I love amplifying other people and 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 uh, you know bringing their stories to life and having heart centered uh, conversations. That's what matters to me. Um, and if I could find people that believe in that and want to sponsor a show or two, and when I say sponsor, it's just having someone like me give you a quick shout out with some of the graphics and things that I do. I think you can see from the show that it wouldn't be too hard for me to slip in a logo or two and, and to give you a great shout out. So I'd appreciate that. Another thing I get asked about because I'm a video content creator is trailer videos. So intro and outro videos, people, I often get comments about the intro to my show or the outro to the show. Uh, but when you have, if you have a, a podcast, if you have a, a a video show of some sort online, something like that, and you want an intro or an outro, I'm working on one right now with with a, with a client right now that we have something coming up pretty cool. Um, you know, voiceover, music, graphics, these kinds of things. So th that that kind of thing, I'm interested in doing and working with you on because again, I, it, it excites me to get creative to help somebody else amplify their story. We can do that. Now, this is something that I'm really, really super excited about. Red TV. Hey, listen, we come up with something called Purple of all things. Red TV, Purple, public relations and promotional live events. So I was talking to my wife, Renuka. Oh, I should call her right now. Let me just do that. Let me just call her. I hope she's there. If she doesn't answer everybody, uh, it's, that would be quite common. <laughs> if she doesn't call, if she doesn't answer, it'd be quite common. Uh, but uh, but uh, Renuka is, saw me, uh, asked about this public relations. I said, you know, I, I think I want to use my ability to do this to help other people amplify their story. Um, so is my beautiful wife there? Renuka, is that you? Hi there. Hi. Hi, darling. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm talking about you right now, just so you know. So we're on the air. We're live, just so you know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. And Jacqueline Way is here. And Jeanette R. Smith, a new friend, a new friend of mine. Hi, and we'll Jeanette. be. Hi, Jacqueline. I've been enjoying the conversation. Oh, you've been watching. Okay. Fantastic. I always expect my spouse to watch. That's I always expect. <laughs> That's the only thing I ask. That's the only thing I ask. So I appreciate that. So I just wanted to mention that we were talking the other day. And, uh, you know, I wanted to uh, continue to use Red TV as a way to. Uh, amplify others. And I know doing live events and live streaming is very difficult for most people. It's difficult for me. Trust me, everybody. This is, it, it's, it's, it's a difficult thing to, to do live and to all of these things that you see going on and so on. It, there's a skill to that. And uh, I've been practicing. I do my best. It's just like music. People think music comes natural to me. It does not. I have to practice, practice, practice. It's just like Jeanette does her voiceovers. She does not just wake up and do voiceovers. I know that she's worked at it and practiced it and so on. Um, so, and, and public speaking for, uh, Jacqueline, same thing. So for me, it's this. So I, I said to Renuka, I said, yeah, I, I want to use this and we could do, you know, book launches and we could do webinar launches. Anyone think you want to do a, a public relations sort of event, whether it's public relations, promotional live events. So that's what I said. I said, I think we should do something like public relations and promotional live events. And then she took the first letters of all of that and said, that spells purple. And I said, that is cool. Red TV presents purple. So we just literally, that was Renuka's doing. So thank you, darling. Thank you for that. I just <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure that you got kudos for that because you came up with that. <laughs> Renuka is like, she's the smartest. Well, she's definitely the smartest person in this house. Let me tell you that. And uh, so she's super, super clever when it comes to those things. And she said, yeah, Red TV presents purple. I was like, I love it. So I'm going to work on that. But basically the idea of purple, it could be all kinds of different promotional things that you want to do. So I put them along the bottom. There's all kinds of things that people want to do, book launches and product launches. And maybe you have an upcoming event and you want to do something like this and bring in callers and do interviews and things like new. Maybe you have a new online course or a podcast or a conference or a trade show, webinar, music event. It could be anything. It could be anything. Um, I'm pretty sure that, uh, that uh, we could find a way to work together. So there's a plug right there. If you have something to do with public relations, promotional live events, something like that, Reach out to Red TV. Renuka will be here to, to help me in the back office. Correct, my spouse, my beautiful I spouse. I am here to help. I'm here to guide. I'm here to 
you know, talk, do whatever it takes to to bring new people on board and help them work with you. Absolutely. Oh, and one you. of the things that I will vouch for Peter for, I say it all the time, a lot of people think his talent with music is something that's just naturally and he really works at it very he practices 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 and i am witness to the idea of all the hair pulling and everything else he does when things don't work and he does his utmost to uh, put on a great show and technical troubleshoot and make sure everything is rock solid before he goes live so that the amazing experience everyone has is at, at the best top quality you can experience. So that is absolutely the case. And that's, that's what he will do for you. Oh, that's a great plug. See, I can't say that about me, <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate that. And I do, I do do my best. That's why when I reached out to someone like uh, Jeanette, for example, um, I know that she, I, I know she's a professional. So when I ask her to come on a show like this, I want it to be professional. I want it to be uh, a great experience. And so if you have uh, a product or service, anyone listening to this right now, that's the kind of care and attention that uh, Red TV can bring to you. So thank you, darling. I'm going to let you go. I appreciate it. Thanks for picking up. I appreciate that. Hey, we got, <laughs> I'll see you at happy hour. I'll see you at happy hour. Okay, darling. Hi, darling. Bye. Yeah, yeah. So there you go, everybody. That was my beautiful wife, Renuka. Uh, she's a rock star. And uh, Jacqueline and Jeanette, you guys would just love her. She is so tapped in. She's the one that keeps me guided. I always call myself a kite. You know, she's that person on the beach and she just lets the kite go out. And the kite goes as high as it wants to go. And then, you know, in the wind, kites often start going like this and they need to be pulled in. And that's what Renuka is for me. She lets me go out and then I start doing this and then she pulls me in and just tightens me up and then I get going again. So that's what she is for me. So I wanted to share all that. I, that was the most uh, uncomfortable thing, uh, Jacqueline way that I've done on uh, my shows. Like you would not believe it was just uh, very, very difficult for me to do that. And there we are. I did it. There we go. <laughs> can I tell you too? I'm proud of you for that. But let, let me just can I give you another um kudos? As somebody who had spent 30 years of their life in television news as a as, as journalist, and I and I don't even pull this out, but just so people understand the weight of what I'm about to say, Emmy Telly, Aurora honored journalist, editor, producer. This guy has his stuff together. I also do StreamYard. I know what it takes to put every little graphic and every little place you see it. I know what it takes for him to be tech directing his own show while he's hosting the show. I notice every little nuance, every crawl, every bug, every lower third, every everything. And this is the real deal. This is like network level quality stuff. So I'm just saying, if you get involved with this, you're going to have the best of the best. Oh, look, and I'm <laughs> like we're uncle about, and I am complete. You're gonna make me cry. I appreciate that. Thank you for saying that. I knew you would. I I know that you know that stuff, and that's why I'm very conscious of when uh, again, if I reach out to you or someone uh, of, of of the level of experience that you have, and when I say I think you'll have a good experience, I know that I work extremely hard to make sure you have that, and that's what makes me happy. You, we talk about happiness. That makes me happy. That makes me happy that you have a great experience. So, Jacqueline, you've been teaching me well. <laughs> I pre oh you got on mute you're on mute oh hold on uh, unmute yourself there you go no unmute sorry yeah. I forgot yeah, I muted while your wife was up no worries listen you know what we all have to own that within ourselves sometimes it's the hardest thing for us to do hmm. but you know we have to own what we want to do if we don't own it we don't share it with people we don't step into it and that's how our conversation started how do we step into who we truly are you know you've stepped back and now you're stepping forward and i'm so proud of you my friend and oh, you just keep putting that. it out there it may not come today and it may not be tomorrow but in that beautiful moment when you are least expecting it and you let right. it go it's going to come pouring in and it's going to be beautiful i can't uh, wait to watch uh, I, I got the front row Luca too what a oh, great no day. listen it, this, i i can't listen and you and i think everyone knows this in your life in general forget the red tv and business in general i mean if you don't have someone um somewhere and it doesn't necessarily have to be a spouse obviously it could be a friend a family member it could be anybody um it could be a colleague at work whatever but you need that one person that just really knows you and and still loves you and still supports you and and can and and read between the lines can hear all the nuances between your silences and the things that you say and the words you choose and 
Uh, and that's what Renuki is for me. So I hope everyone has someone like that in their life. And if you don't, hey, you can just reach out and we'll chat. And there's two over there, by the way. There's two people right there. <laughs> hey, I just got that in Jeanette, let me tell you. You know, there's, there's when two you people. find your soul sisters same, same. and the, the people you're with in this world, it's Absolutely. an amazing thing. So Jeanette, I know you have to go and do a voiceover. God love you. This and good. It's always good to see uh, someone working in the business. And yeah. I'm happy for you. I'm Thank super you. happy for you. You have an amazing amazing voice so I, I look at and it. always it always works this listen the background fire someone's not having a good day so whoever no, not whoever like is going out to that fire or whatever that call is we're sending you good vibes we're sending you good vibes but i'm glad that you're uh, working in the business i hope people will google uh, your name here and uh, learn more about you visit you on clubhouse Jacqueline Way, what can I say? Come on, you know what Love I think. So uh, we just Love have a great. You, I cannot wait till we get in person and have that first martini. I'm oh looking forward God. to that. We're having the gratitude yeah. cocktail. I'm We're sending you a picture of that, that today. I'm going to send you a picture of the gratitude cocktail. I got super, it. Yeah, right. So I appreciate that. And listen, I'm going to put it along the bottom while I play out the video at the end here. Uh, just special thanks to everybody here, like on camera. Mm -hmm. these Melanie, people, no, you know, Melanie, and everybody that came. You know, Rhonda. Them. Yeah, amazing. You know, Rob House, Asha, posted. everybody. Yeah, and I hope you guys, uh, I know that you, you got a lot to follow up on, honestly, Jeanette and, and Jacqueline, but go back to the comments. A lot of them were about you uh, and what you guys were saying. So I think there's great nuggets in there and there's great context for you. And 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 that's the whole point of doing this unscripted. We don't know what's going to happen, where it's going to go. And uh, this is the first one, just so you know, I've never done an unscripted one before. Uh, I think it rock and rolled. I think it did yes, well. Uh, it was awesome. So we we had a universal conversation. Like, let's put it that way. You're first unscripted, and we talked about what happens to us when we die. I mean, it just right. doesn't get any better than that, right? Like, I we talked so. about the big questions that people ask themselves in their lifetime. What is happiness, and where do you go when you die? So yeah. kudos to you, my friend, for bringing that conversation out. I because see. it's right. going to be your personal I am's, right? It's going oh. to be your personal mantra. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. You know what it took for me today? It was courage. And uh, one of my favorite words is courage. And uh, many years ago, I went out and visited um, a group camp for uh, struggling teenagers. And um, it was just amazing. But long story short, they had these pathways cut for them to do hiking and so on. Um, and one of the paths had this, uh, it, they're all labeled with different uh, words and these kinds of things. And this one had courage on it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I just so love that word. So I was filming and doing all kinds of different things. And I said, I got to take a shot of this uh, for myself. So long term. So this, I've had this video clip for a long, long time. Um, so I just put the camera up and I just walked down this path with the word courage in it. I just loved it. And, uh, and, uh, I took a couple clips from my trip to Rwanda and I put it together with a song that I wrote, uh, just talking about my journey down this road. So here's a, I'm going to end off the show with, uh, what I needed today was a little courage and help with Jacqueline. Thank you for doing that to encourage me to talk about myself. And uh, I know that sounds crazy to most people, but trust me, uh, it's not what I do. That's not my forte. Um, I'm, I really, but it is now. <laughs> well, I'm going to, I'm going to try to remind people that, you know, I want red TV to be successful because that means I can reach more people and help more people. That's literally what it means. Um, so if, if, if people are already out there looking for something that maybe I can help them with, then please reach out to me. And if that helps me grow red TV to reach more people, boom, everyone wins. So, uh, so I'm going to end the show on, uh, this old road, a little song I wrote and filmed and Jeanette, Hey, good luck to you today and everything you do. I can't wait to chat with you again on uh, clubhouse. Jacqueline Way, please everyone go out to 365give.ca and uh, learn more about that amazing uh, program. And, and, and it's more, it's, pro, it's not even a pro, it's a movement. It's a it's global a movement. movement. And it will change your life uh, as it does, as it has for me. So I appreciate that. You two are rock stars. Have I a so beautiful weekend, everyone. And look at the too. hair on this show today. Right. <laughs> right. It's everywhere. <laughs> hair everywhere. Happy All Friday. Right, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye, and everybody. as I always end every show, be kind out there, everybody. Just be kind. Just be, be kind, be love. See everybody. Cheers. Love you. One, two, three, four.